history of district administration. Explore your history. Explore your land. Explore your sister islands. And Cayman Airways. Call them on 949-2311 to book your nonstop flights to Los Angeles and Panama. And now, Barbados. And Digicel, Cayman's bigger, better network. And Doctor's Hospital. Peace of mind is important when life happens. Doctor's Hospital. Always there for you. Call 949-6066. But I do have some questions. There are more questions than for most listeners participation program talk today what is on your mind k man if you are ready to talk we are ready to listen here's, here's your, your host, host sterling, sterling dwayne, dwayne ebanks, ebanks. Hey, welcome back. We're going to start this Monday off perfectly as the week is going to get even better with each unfolding second. And 50 years in the making, well, we're going to tell you how uh, the whole notion of technology and its use uh, for infancy to today as we talk to our friends at CNB. Want to know more? Well, stay tuned for Talk Today. Avoid any statements or comments which are abusive, derogatory, malicious, or defamatory. Do not use indecent language or make any statement that is false or misleading. Call 1-800-534-8255-949-6990-949-8037 or WhatsApp us on 925-3261. Email talk today at candw.ky. Let your voice be heard. And now, back to Sterling Dwayne Ebanks, Radio K-Man Talk Today. Hey, welcome back, and thanks for joining us, and to Miss Ashley Powell and Miss Denise Miller. Thank you both for joining us. If, if I might, as I was thinking about, you know, our discussion, now, uh, any entity that is wrong for any length of time, in five decades, this came on nationals be, you know, within the community, if I might say, you know, young, intelligent, ambitious leaders like yourself would, in, in one respect, serve as an example for the rest of us that, you know, careers can get started and can continue. Uh, we can make, you know, continuous shifts if necessary. And, and secondly, to see a space evolve, uh, I would imagine the first iterations of banking that came on, you know, pen and paper to today where it is a, a digital platform and necessity to you know, just secure that information, but be able to ensure that our people who access it can do so with the same level of confidence and convenience that they would when they would come into the, you know, the tellers way back when, right, Ms. Denise? Absolutely. All <laughs> right. It's going to be good fun. So thank you very much for coming across and sharing with us for a few minutes as you wish. How are you today? I'm good. How are you doing to, today? Uh, I mean, look at me. Any better? I'll be a twin. <laughs> <laughs> what trouble that would be. <laughs> oh, it, it's a good day. I try to give thanks. The idea of, of banking and its evolution, even in the Cayman context, from the mergers and acquisitions globally to even here within our space, but this idea of online banking, I mean, that sounds, on one hand, fascinating, but for others go, well, what does that mean? You know, where's my money? How do I get to Who do I talk to? Well, yeah, that's the well, section you're in, right? Yeah, online banking is actually, you know, uh, an area that we want, you know, most of our customers to be, um, or all of our customers to be going towards nowadays. Um, you know, online banking, you can be able to do any of the transactions that you want to do in person over the counter. Mm -hmm. uh, that can happen online nowadays. And, you know, we just want to um, let people be aware of what those types of transactions are. You know, you can do your international wires. You can do your transfers to, you know, your husband or wife within the same bank or locally to another bank. Mm -hmm. um, you know, any transaction that you would have done in the past over the counter, we're now doing it online. And um, we want to encourage people to be able to do that. And we also make sure that um, we do everything to um, provide a secure platform so that everyone can do that safely. Well, I certainly want you to help us to understand it because there are many of us, not even those that we may say, oh, well, our parents and grandparents that might have been more comfortable you know, with that space of going physically into the bank, but also to appreciate how even many of us, uh, I don't tell me Storm, I say this, I actually love technology. I just <laughs> find that it's an excuse by many to avoid interacting personally. And I, I love that, you know, that, that sort of personal engagement. 
but to you, you know, Miss Ashla Power, the idea, well, welcome first, before I get into it, because this is exciting. I mean, <laughs> yeah. uh, how are you today? Good, good. How are you? Uh, like I said, man, I just <laughs> perfecto, perfecto, <laughs> mi amor. <laughs> no, but the idea, though, that we, we can do things in Cayman at the convenience of our desk or late at night when we go, oh, my daughter is in school. She needs money for, mm-hmm. you know, tuition. With a click of a button, whether she is at UCCI or some university across the pond, we can get that money to her mm-hmm. if necessary, once we have it. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's super convenient. I mm. I don't know about you, but, um, you know, sometimes, you know, while you're at work, you're too busy to, you yeah. know, do anything for yourself. Even on your lunch hour, you know, you yeah. go out there and you're running around, there's traffic that's happening. You know, you don't really have that much time to be able to do stuff. So I tend to do my banking in the middle of the night <laughs> <laughs> you know um i do it when i'm at home in bed um and you know i have no worries um i have completed my transactions and i didn't have to stand in a line to do it at your convenience when your mind is you know most at ease and you're clear exactly that kind of brings me to what i want to maybe ask miss ashley i wonder sometimes if, if you know the banking platform sees you know the user logs on at you know three o'clock in the in the morning go huh what's that person doing up this probably you know how does that but it may be 3 p.m in the afternoon right before you know the children get out of school uh, help us understand the importance of cybersecurity. what is protected what we maybe can do as the you know the user to assist in ensuring that it is secure First, I'll start with what Cayman National does to protect our customers. Okay. And so we do have our security systems in place that do, you know, the analysis things like what you mentioned. So um, especially especially for the mobile app, because a lot of people are going to use that versus the desktop version, right? Because right? it's convenient. It's just in your hand. You can just do it anywhere, right? Um, but yeah, we do have our security systems in place that will monitor for... Um, signs of unusual activity, right? So mm-hmm. if you, um, if it's unusual that you're sending a ten thousand dollar wire, I don't know, to s- Japan, obviously that's going to be flagged and and held by the bank. So for your own security, that for you to verify, right? Mm-hmm. But other than that, then you know everything is very convenient. Your transactions go through. You still get your receipts just like you would if you did a, tra- a transaction over the counter. So it's all the same. Um, you get all the same information that you would receive um, at the added convenience of doing it wherever you want. If I might ask, that mobile device that we have in our hands, it's almost a leash. It's almost a fix to us in, in some way. Mm-hmm. Is it, just generally speaking, any more secure than uh, to use that versus you know sitting at your, I call it your desktop, your computer, whether at work or home and you, you see it there? this digital device in your hand uh, less secure? Um, Nowadays, I I wouldn't say so because a lot of um, the smartphones nowadays come with their own, uh, what we would call antivirus or or just security in place that's already built into your phone, Um, whether it's, you know, iPhone, Android, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, They already have their security as well as, you know, if you have an Apple computer or a Windows computer, we do encourage you to purchase additional antivirus because you know the baseline one is it is there and it is provided by the vendor as in from apple or windows mm-hmm. um but you know additional security is always great right <laughs> so that's what it tell me man right. got a peace of mind <laughs> before we go to the break this whole idea of wi-fi uh we always would hear in the early days you know don't use a public wi-fi network and it would seem that many of us for whatever reason and concern with some concern even our younger people you know, they may have a, a wonderful data plan, but they still want to log on to your Wi-Fi once they, they come in. So is using the Wi-Fi at a public place, you know, you're at the library, versus the Wi-Fi in your house as part of your personal mm-hmm. sort of system? Your private network. Yeah. Uh, that's the, okay. Right. Um, What's it, advice? I would say there it is a bit more riskier, mm-hmm. right, using free public Wi-Fi that is unsecured, as in there's no password, mm-hmm. um, because then anyone can just jump on. And yes, there are nefarious people out there um, that we wouldn't think because, you know, we have came on kind and all those good things. But um, <laughs> yeah, there are people <laughs> out there. But uh, it is it is a, le- a little less secure. So we do, um, in general, the, the, the security advice would be, you know, use 
either at home or over data instead of Wi-Fi. Okay. Before we go to the break, Ms. Denise, anything you want to maybe jump in and share? Or? Uh, you know, I think <coughs> Ashley's doing a great job. <laughs> I, I agree with you. We second our motion. Thanks. Thank you, you guys are doing a fantastic job. All right. So when we come back from the break, we'll talk more. Uh, because, you know, today's a Monday. We're going to give away a free mortgage. No, it's <laughs> <laughs> hey. not authorized to do that. <laughs> I didn't say for what. <laughs> All right, no, just just kidding you. But <clears throat> I'm hoping that part of our discussion, people will be inspired by you and see the careers as well. You know, just by extension, seeing what we can do, what's available, and that banking goes beyond maybe you know what we thought. But let's talk more about it. What's online banking? What are some of the secure things? And what is on offer? To our listeners, please stay tuned. At Doctors Hospital, we know life happens, and usually when you least expect it. So when unexpected medical issues arise, you need quality care close to home. Located in the heart of Georgetown, our accomplished team of physicians and medical staff treat minor urgent conditions such as migraines, chest and abdominal pain, shortness of breath, burns, broken bones, open wounds, and more. 24 hours, 7 days a week with no appointment necessary. Peace of mind is important when life happens. At Doctors Hospital, we're always here just for you. Need to speak to someone? Call 949 Discover your dream home with Cayman Nationals Home Loan. Get up to 95% financing, repayment up to 40 years, and just a 0.5% commitment fee. Your interest rate? Depending on your risk factors, it'll be fixed or variable. Plus, you get a pre-approved credit card. This is a limited time offer. Dial 949-8300 or email lending at caymanational.com today. From boat days to beach gatherings, leave the catering to Subway. Choose from small and large sandwich platters, double meat wrap platters, and top it off with optional cookie platters for dessert. Or ask about our Subway box to go with the option of six inch or foot long sandwich, one cookie, and one bag of chips. For all occasions and celebrations, let Subway focus on the food so you can focus on the fun. Visit Subway.ky for catering options. Subway, eat fresh. You know who this is? The same old girl that went to Hollywood and Panama? Well, guess what? The fun ain't done yet. Because this year, I'm going to country concerts in Denver. I got kick up my heels in Times Square. And I got find my way to Barbados. I got keep living the dream with Cayman Airways. We so blessed to have them. I tell you what, though, this old girl's feeling younger than ever. Make your travel dreams come true with Cayman Airways, offering international non-stop flights from Cayman to New York, Miami, Tampa, Denver, Los Angeles, Panama, Kingston, Mobe, La Saiba, and Havana, plus Barbados. Enjoy free rum punch, free in-flight entertainment, free seat selection, and free meals on select flights. Call 949-2311, contact a travel agent, or visit Cayman Airways dot com. Your dream home starts with a vision, and often inspiration is at the heart of that vision. Brand Source Home Gallery's in house designers are here to help bring your vision to life. Whether you're remodeling or building a new home, Brand Source Home Gallery is your one stop solution. Explore their kitchen cabinets, sinks, faucets, bath fixtures, tubs, vanities, and more. Let Brand Source's designers help and inspire you with your next project. Call 623 5000 and schedule an appointment with a design expert at Brand Source Home Gallery Dorsey Drive, Industrial Park, serving Cayman for 50 years. Radio Cayman's Talk Today. What is on your mind, Cayman? Hey, welcome back, and thanks for joining us. And if I might publicly say that, you know, Mr. Ashton Powell and, you know, Mr. Denise Miller, to, to you, as, as young, intelligent, ambitious, you know, Caymanians, and despite being in the, you know, 2024, we're still seeing a world where, you know, they're first, the first woman to do this, the first. But we come from a stock of great women who have achieved incredible things and who still continue to raise the bar and set examples and inspire uh, you both, you know, sort of exhibit that. And, you know, my prayer is that you continue and, and epitomize the greatness of our women. So thank you. Thanks. <laughs> the idea that we're talking about cybersecurity, online banking, and when I 
was thinking back just during the break to the early days of banking, going with my older siblings and my parents into the bank, the tellers, I guess what we we'll call, were mostly women. And in the offices, the people at the front, you know, were most of women. And now we have two fantastic leaders like you, who, you know, making the whole thing work. So we've come from that space where we're now the CEOs, we're now you know, running the show, but we're controlling the, the technology. Just like not long ago, women were not in that science area uh, as you are now. So hopefully I say that to ask our parents, talk to our children and say, listen, there are no barriers except what we limit our minds and our imaginations, right? All right, cybersecurity and online banking. Are they, can you have one with the other? The other? They go hand in hand? Not today. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should have one with go hand in hand. Yeah. Okay. So talk to us. Back to you, Mr. Nice. I mean, some of the things that true online banking that we can access and, and we can do. Well, I mean, you, like I said before, you know, you can do your international wires. You can do transfers between your own accounts or, you know, to another person. Mm -hmm. Transfer locally to another bank. You can do bill payments um, to a, a large number of companies. Um, you know, uh, there are so many different things you can do. You can pay your credit card in real time. Uh, you know, if you pay onto your credit card. It'll show up immediately after you've submitted it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all those things are, you know, great convenience to people. You don't have to wait um, right. for these things to show up anymore. I told we have a caller, um, and I'll just take that in a second. But if I may ask, we're at Kemal National, and I want to pay some, like, move money from one of my accounts to another account at Kemal National. That's instantaneous? Yes. From my checking to my savings, uh, whatever, instantaneous. Yes. If I want to move it from my account to another customer at KMI National, for whatever reason, instantaneous. Yes, it is. Credit card, the same thing. Yes, it is. Bill payment, possibly? Um, it's not instantaneous. Um, it depends on when uh, the company is able to pull it down. Okay. Right? So it's not instantaneous, but it's pretty quickly. Okay. All right. And well, what about, you mentioned credit card, just for, you know, my own, I guess, understanding notification. Uh, I pay my credit card. It's mm -hmm. the due date. I go, jeez. Oh, I got to pay it. Uh, it'll cycle right then or it'll be a well, while later you know as as soon as you um, go ahead and you pay it it's gonna sh um, it's gonna reflect okay yeah not to belabor it but let's see because it happens we're traveling uh, we have either somebody here in Cayman or we have a good access in, in the country we're at and we go oops I'm at the limit I better pay so I have it and they put the money on that'll become available in some banks yes. the next day or two no. no it's instantaneous as soon as you Make the payment, it will appear. Wow. Yeah. I mean, my dad gave me money quickly, but not as quick as that. <laughs> he got to take a while to open his wallet up and the screen will squeak. And she sees the sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> Can we take this call? Sure. <laughs> hey, welcome. As we speak to Ms. Ashton Powell and Ms. Uh, Denise Miller from Cayman National. And remember, they're celebrating five decades. Hey, welcome. Thanks for calling. Oh, well, you were talking a little bit about, uh, I think you made reference to early banking in Cayman. Y yes, sir. I tried to anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I think that goes back to one one bank, which actually was at the uh, the government uh, government savings uh, bank, mm -hmm. the government building, the government house building, mm -hmm. which actually sat right just about on the premises that where you all are today, okay. where, where Miss Francis was the, the teller, the chief op chief operating officer and everything else, I guess, that went along with banking in that day. But, uh, and, you know, you just made reference to uh, being away and wanting uh, wanting to maybe uh, top, top up your account, but a better, better language. Mm -hmm. But, you know, West, uh, Western Union was always there that you could, if you were in a place where you could call home, you could call home and say, hey, I need $50, send it by Western Union. And you could usually get it wherever you were at in maybe an hour and a half, two hours. Which, if you look at today instantaneously and you look back, and I'm thinking back to uh, about 65 years, when I was in, in uh, Hawaii, and I called home and 
instead of God, <laughs> I made it for the dollar. <laughs> he, he told me, he says, well, you're, you're in Honolulu, Hawaii, stay away from Hotel Street, and I'm going to send you the fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> in about, I, I guess it was in, in about three hours, I had that fifty dollars in my hand. Of course, fifty dollars could buy a heck of a lot. Back with, that, that would have been uh, fifty-eight, around nineteen fifty-eight. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a lot of things that people and you never hear really mention as far as you go back to the early days of banking. But in the early days of banking, the merchants played a very, a very vital role in in the banking transactions or whatever you call the banking process during those days because they handled most of the foreign exchange. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think you could go to to the, the old government back and maybe I should get a check or a draft or something but uh, but the merchants was cashing all of the and based mainly it was US money orders that was coming home from the seafarers. Mm -hmm. And back in those days, that U.S., uh, actually U.S. postal money order, a U.S. postal money order was like cash. The merchant would exchange with various families, uh, uh, checks coming in from their seafarers, give them the, at that time, I guess it was the pound, shilling, and pence, uh, equivalent of uh, whatever the dollar, value was seven shillings a dollar, I think it was somewhere around that. And they could send those endorsed uh, postal, US postal money orders directly to whoever they were buying from, and be it Tampa, be it uh, uh, Marcus Hook or wherever, mm -hmm. they, they, it was accepted as, as, uh, as payment. Yes, sir. So. Uh, You've come a long way. Well, long way, yeah. Yes, sir. A long way if a man Mr. Francis operated the the uh, the bank uh, right right exercise book. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, now computer banks. Right. And all that kind of stuff. Mm. But, uh, and uh, I think you know the the process of Cayman banking. You know, it, it took some 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 hard thinking and uh, and hard decisions. To bring it to where where it where it's at, mm -hmm. um, but I'm not too sure that all of this uh, this online stuff may not be taking it in a regressive moment because a lot of that stuff cannot be protected. Mm. So. All right, well, uh, thanks thanks for sharing, man. It's a good reminder. Miss huh. Austin. Oh, I was just saying it definitely is protected. It's actually even more protected, right? Because you have to have um, your identity verified more so online. So, for example, even when you're using the Cayman National um, app on your phone, you would have to have your OTP or even your fingerprint to log into the app to, e to even complete your transactions. So you still have to identify, you very much have to identify yourself before you can access your money. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, but there, 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 are mip, there are manipulators around, and he even probably had them floating around here and came out. Uh, my, my dear, can float and went, whatever you, whatever you, whatever, uh, what they call it, uh, uh, board, uh, I forget, forget what, what's the term, the term, term they use, anyway, security board, whatever, it can manipulate around those things. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, as you, as you think. Yeah, <laughs> but no, but thank you. And and with that, I can maybe ask Miss Ashton because, like the caller, there are many of us who might think we're going physically into the bank, we're mm -hmm. presenting ourselves so it's the person, mm -hmm. then the the employee of the bank can look and there's an interaction. Mm -hmm. um, today's world, because of travel, convenience, just share preference. Give us a, you know, we talk about OTP. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there are other, you know multi-step verifications and the like. Yes. Thanks again for that call, sir. Give us a comfort that what we're doing, yes, like the caller has shared, you know, there are people who are nefarious, but uh, there's a level of, at least, security. Yes. Yeah, so we, we completely understand the hesitancy, especially because um, it is new, right? So anything new is going to be a bit mm -hmm. 
um, you know, so be new, so it'll be strange to grasp at first. But it is, it is, you know, goes without saying that we are in a digital world at this point, and it's not going away. It's going to just continue. So Kim and National, um, we definitely uh, embrace that. And so we do take um, a lot of investment and a lot of time into securing our systems and, and helping our customers stay secure through all avenues that we interact with customers. So um, not just through our online banking, but also, you know, our tellers will go through training to identify anything that um, they can help the customers. Even if you come in to do, because we do have, unfortunately, we do have cases where persons will come into the bank and still, you know, be mm -hmm. susceptible to some type of fraud or something. And that's, right. that's an over-the-counter transaction. So we do still have our tellers doing training and stuff to identify those things, not just through the digital yeah. methods. And, and thanks for that. Maybe and I'll, sorry, Ms. I just wanted to say, you know, um, part of the reason why we're here is to try to educate people yeah. on what they themselves can do in order mm. to protect themselves, right? And so part of that is, you know, educating yourself as to what type of information you should be expected um, to give to someone who is um, a representative of the bank and what type of information you would be expected to not you give might. to anyone, right? right? So um, the OTPs, for example, your one-time passcode, that's something that, you know, you're not going to be um, asked to provide. You're not going to be asked to provide your password. Um, you know, that's information that only you should have. Right. right? Um, information such as your bank account number or anything like that, that's information that we would already have as representatives of the bank, right? So if you ever for some reason feel that suspicious of the caller um, or whatever, for whatever reason, you know, you can just say, you know, you would like to um, call back on the main line and call back on the main line of 949-8300. Um, and speak to someone and you know sometimes you uh, the, you may need to speak back to the person who you were speaking to before before you get off of that call ask who it is what department it is and when you call back the main line you can say you know you were speaking to this person can you be put through to them and obviously if you can't get put through to that person then you know that something was off right right and we do have a lot of um, educational resources available to our customers for things that Denise was mentioning, um, all those tips, um, including these pamphlets that we have in all of our branches. Um, the campaign is called Take a Sec to Double Check because that is definitely going to be your thing that you should remember the most is to just pause, right? Mm -hmm. So don't rush. If you get a link, if you get a phone call, if you get anything, just pause and ask yourself, should I be expecting this call? Are they asking me for sensitive information, such as what Denise was saying? And be um, wary of the uh, caller rushing you. Yeah, mm -hmm. don't, and you know, they should not be rushing you. And that's why I said the best defense you can have is to just pause and ask yourself these questions, you know. Am I expecting this call? Um, can I verify the identity of this person by calling Cayman National myself? Are you, is the link suspicious? Is the phone number suspicious? You know, just take a moment. I almost inclined to, to share. It, it wasn't intended to be. I'd just done a training way back there. I got a call from my bank. Oh, we just want to call to verify certain information, right? Mm -hmm. So they're asking, I said, well, stop a second. Can you give me some information about you so I verify that you're calling from my bank? I caught the person off guard. And I'm like, hang on, how do I know you calling from where, you know? Yes, and that's uh, a it, very legitimate, yes. that's a very fine answer that you yeah. should be able to ask and we should and we will be able to answer those questions yeah. for you okay, i didn't like that one way but anyway <laughs> 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 all right when we come back a couple more minutes sure. I, i'm so i'm so excited that, that you guys are here and we can chat so for your listeners please stay tuned at doctor's hospital we know life happens and usually when you least expect it so when unexpected medical issues arise, you need quality care close to home. Located in the heart of Georgetown, our accomplished team of physicians and medical staff treat minor urgent conditions such as migraines, chest and abdominal pain, shortness of breath, burns, broken bones, open wounds, and more. 24 hours, seven days a week with no appointment necessary. Peace of mind is important when life happens. At Doctors Hospital, we're always here just for you. Need to speak to someone call 949-6066 
Find your dream car with a Cayman National Vehicle Loan. Enjoy 100% financing, up to eight year repayment, and a 7% fixed interest rate for the first five years. For eco-friendly cars, we'll waive your commitment fee. This only applies to new vehicles. Call 949-8300 or email lending at caymanational.com today. The best foundation you can wear is glowing, healthy skin. The offices of dermatologist Dr. Wien Porter specialize in enhancing your skin's well-being. Whether you're seeking advanced skin care, including any skin cancers, Botox, filler, cosmetic skin enhancements, or simply looking to reduce wrinkles, Dr. Porter offers a full-service dermatology and dermatological surgery practice. For more information, email drporterkman at gmail.com or call 946-9020. That is 946-9020. You know who this is? The same old girl that went to Hollywood and Panama? Well, guess what? The fun ain't done yet. Because this year, I'm going to country concerts in Denver. I got kick up my heels in Times Square. And I got to find my way to Barbados. I got to keep living the dream with Cayman Airways. We so blessed to have them. I tell you what, though, this old girl feeling younger than ever. Make your travel dreams come true with Cayman Airways, offering international non-stop flights from Cayman to New York, Miami, Tampa, Denver, Los Angeles, Panama, Kingston, Mobe, La Saiba, and Havana, plus Barbados. Enjoy free rum punch, free in-flight entertainment, free seat selection, and free meals on select flights. Call 949-2311, contact a travel agent, or visit Cayman Airways com Every day, thousands of us use our roads. I drive to work. My dad drives me to school. I make deliveries across the island. But with every journey comes responsibility. Our actions behind the wheel can have serious consequences. So let's make a commitment to safety. The Cayman Islands government invites you to take the Safe Drivers Pledge. The pledge is our opportunity to show our dedication to creating a safer environment on our roads. Do it for your community. For your loved ones. For yourself. Let's make our roads safer together and say no more for 2024. Visit www.gov.ky forward slash road safety for more information and to take the pledge. Radio Cayman's Talk Today. What is on your mind, Cayman? Hey, welcome back, and thanks to Mr. Denise Miller and Ms. You know, Ashton Powell for sharing with us, because I think through what you were saying, it's an opportunity for us now as we embrace technology, the convenience, uh, sometimes the comfort. I mean, you're at home, you're, you're off work, it's in the evening time, early morning before you go, you can do things that you can and will need to do, but don't have to go in traffic, don't have to stand in lines, but you need to be sensible. Absolutely. All right. Huh. I should call my brother. Just kidding. <laughs> 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 to you, Miss Ashley. I mean, the campaign was to take a set take to a double, sec check. double check. Double check, right? Huh, I like right. that. Yeah. So, as I said, um, just just understand that you're. Is this is your time, right? So, mm -hmm. if someone claims that they're calling you from the bank, that that means they're calling you for a service, right? So, it's your time. So, take take a moment and just think about what they're asking you. Um, are they asking you for any suspicious, inf your sensitive information? You don't need to give that out. Or if they're asking you to verify your card number, well, the bank would already know your card number. So, you know, things like that. We, uh, we just encourage our customers to just try to understand how they can recognize their suspicious activity that is targeting them. Um, but also just, it is, it is important to say that unfortunately, because of the digital innovation that we've experienced globally, um, one downside of that is that information is publicly available everywhere, right? So it's very easy to get a hold of anyone's information, unfortunately, um, such as your phone number, your email address, you know, things as simple as you put your email or your phone number on your luggage tag, right? It's already out there. Or receipts from the um, from stores or let's say the phone book, right? All of those things, your information's already out there. Or another one 
that's very common um, is Zoom, right? So most people would have interacted with Zoom through the pandemic. And so your email is available to every, anyone that would need yeah. it at that point. So that is how, you know, you would get these um, what we call phishing emails or scam emails that ask you to, you know, click a link or enter your password or anything suspicious like that. Um, unfortunately, that is how they're able to to get that information to you. And as you were sharing, I was just thinking that maybe sometimes, you know, it is us, the individual, you know, as people, we need to be sensible, you yes. know. But if we are traveling, we might be a little more cautious. But I wonder to what extent when we are here in Cayman, going about our daily transactions, whether online or in person, presenting you know, our debit or credit cards at the merchants that we customarily do. We might think that the bad actor is someone far away. Mm -hmm. It could be someone right in the region, yep. uh, someone right next door, standing right next to us as we're mm -hmm. doing this thing. Yep. Are those things that we should be mindful of as well or not? Yes, yes absolutely. For sure. Hmm. You know, w one of the things um, that, you know, you need to make sure of is that when you, you know, you go out to dinner or you um, go out to the supermarket and you're doing your monthly shopping or whatever the case might be, you know, you're not giving your card to someone to walk away with your card. You know, you need to be mindful of that because you're giving at that point, you're giving an opportunity for someone to capture card details. But interesting point. I mean, that happens a lot. Uh, let's say in a, in a restaurant like setting, mm -hmm. you know, you're ready to pay. Now I know they have the little terminals that can come to you. But many times, perhaps more frequently than now, you know, you put the, you know, your card into the little folder, and you know, the server takes it and then returns sometimes. Yeah. What seems like a long time, and you're just chatting. Yes. So what do you do in that case when? Well, I mean, there are a number of things you can do. You can get up and go to, um, you know, say you would like to pay at the terminal yourself. Okay. Um, or, you know, a lot of times what's happening now is that, you know, uh, restaurants have multiple terminals and they bring those straight to the table. Okay. You know, so those are some of the ways. And then, you know, we also have uh, tap to pay available. You know, that is uh, a much quicker and safer option than swiping um, as well. That's why we implemented tap to pay mm -hmm. um, and wherever that's available, we encourage people to use that option. So as a customer, then ask, you know, if they want to take it away, don't be shy about, mm -hmm. hang on, do you need to do that? Because yeah. we don't ask. I mean, yeah. we just yeah. accept. And it is your your property, right? Yeah. So right. you can you are entitled to ask as well as um, if you have our online banking platform. Uh, or even the mobile app, you can just go ahead and open it right there and you can see the transaction in real time pop up Absolutely. so that you okay. verify yeah. that. If I might ask, uh, and it's probably just something that familiarity, you know, since it brings a sense of comfort. I remember the old days that came and I raised you call and, you know, that one 800 number. I think I remember it. <laughs> you, you get a person in short order. Hey, I know that person is a connection. You get more information. The way the world is today, you call in Cayman, a local company, who knows where you'll end up. Mm -hmm. um, maybe men was like the convenience of going into one of your branches because uh, that personal interaction. When we call, when we ask questions, how does Cayman National operate? Is it the local call center is here and there or everywhere? Yeah, well, we do have our, our local call center um, that's uh, housed um, within the bank. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're, 20, they're available 24-7. And we also recently um, have decided to bring back our card security team um, locally, and that's of today's date. Um, I know a lot of people will be happy to hear that. <laughs> so, so when I call, and it's probably someone who will have a point of reference. And thanks for sharing that. The reason yes. why I ask, I was trying to make a transaction, and you call the bank for verification. Mm -hmm. The person at the other end didn't know this very prominent store. And I thought, but, you know, it's, you know, Someone here who knew would know, you know what it was and what the issue was. It's just a disconnect because we didn't understand the particular geography of the, the space. Absolutely. So your call center as well as your card security team, huh, uh, just an added Our benefit. Locally, both locally. Hmm. And they are, like Denise said, they're available 24-7, so you can call them anytime, even if um, you just have a question about cybersecurity. They're also yes. fully capable of answering your questions. You say, hmm. hey, I got this you know, weird phone call or a weird email. They're completely, they'll be able to assist you 24-7. 
Yeah, that's... if you're ever suspicious, please call the customer support um, center at 949-8300 because obviously we want to do everything we can to protect your money as well, right? Okay. Well, I really appreciate you taking time and sharing. Hopefully, the information would obviously benefit you know, your merchants and your customers, but even the rest of us that are listening. It's good information. Any closing thoughts and comments you might want to share? First, Miss Ashley and then Miss Denise. Um, just like I said, just um, we do very much pride ourselves in providing those educational resources to our customers and the wider public. These mm-hmm. are very much general um, cybersecurity tips that you should follow in all areas, not just in your banking. You know, just in all your digital um, transact or. Mm-hmm methods <laughs> let's say uh, you know on your phone and your laptop anything and so like I said we have these pamphlets available in all of our branches um, we also have the same information available online at the Cayman National website and um, this year as part of the 50th and uh, as part of our this campaign we will also be hosting in-person um, workshops for people for our customers to come and attend and also view our new KPOC building in Cayman Bay which is our we pride as our digital branch um, and so we'll be offering workshops to discuss, you know, more cyber tips and how to use online banking and things like that. So just, you know, watch our social media or online um, on the website to find out more about information about that. Thanks. And if you have any questions, um, need additional tips, like Ashley said, please reach out to us at 949-8300 or cnb at caymanational.com. Thank you both very much, and hopefully we'll have to invite you back sometime again, and we can just talk generally. <laughs> All right. All right, to listeners, really, please rejoin us after the break. If they are talking about us. Living in your head rent-free all this time. <laughs> we must be relevant. Radio Cayman, since 1976. From Radio Cayman's newsroom. This is Headlines, local, regional, international news. With a look at your latest headlines, I'm Jevi Ebanks. The Health Services Authority has advised that the phone line number for the Northside Health Center is back in operation. Over the weekend, the HSA said the phone lines went down and the service provider was trying to rectify it. They say it's now back in operation and can be contacted at 947-9525 or subsequently at 916-2824. In regional news, Barbados police say that a 51-year-old Guyanese national has died after he fell from scaffolding while doing construction work on a building in St. James. The police did not disclose the name of the man but said that he was one of two men on the scaffolding when the incident occurred around 8.20 a.m. The scaffolding was approximately 30 to 40 feet high. The Guyanese national was pronounced dead at the scene while other workers were transported to the hospital complaining of back pains and lower limb pains. In other regional news, a Dominican Republic national who was a part of an international drug ring that used various Caribbean ports in their international efforts to distribute cocaine has been jailed for 13 years. Lazaro Rodriguez, 55, was sentenced for his role in an international conspiracy to distribute more than 2,000 pounds of cocaine for unlawful importation in the U.S. The court documents noted that from 2014 through 2019, Rodriguez participated in a drug trafficking network based in the Dominican Republic to transport cocaine throughout South America. Rodriguez was believed to be involved in purchasing, registering, and maintaining vessels used by the drug trafficking network. That's a look at your latest headlines. I'm Jevy Ebanks. More news available at www.radiokman.gov.ky. Check out our social media pages, Facebook, YouTube, X, formerly Twitter, Radio Cayman Headline Headline News. News. When you have a sports or fitness-related injury, trust the expertise of the HSA Sports and Exercise Medicine Clinic to get you back in the game. Our internationally trained and certified physicians specialize in sports traumatology, sports medicine, pain management, and orthopedic surgery. For treatment of common injuries such as tendonitis, arthritis, tennis elbow, rotator cuff, or knee tears, schedule a consultation with the Sports and Exercise Medicine Clinic at Smith Road Medical Center by calling 949-8600 or visit hsa.ky for more information. Hinton Roxroy Connolly was born in Creek, Kimabrak on 9th of September, 1937. Fondly known as Big H to his family and friends, following a five-year career at sea, Mr. Hinton returned to Kimabrak 
taking up work with Brack Power and Light Company for three years prior to moving to Grand Cayman, where he commenced employment with Cable and Wireless in March 1966. Big H would eventually move back to Cayman Brack, working his way up from a linesman to a supervisor throughout the 29 years of employment with Cable and Wireless, eventually retiring in August 1994. Following his retirement, Mr. Hinton continued to do electrical work for the many people of Cayman Brack. Radio Cayman's Talk Today. What is on your mind, Cayman? Carl, welcome back. Now, did you see me run back to my desk? And I was sitting, well, we we're expecting some guests to come and chat with us in a bit. And uh, if and when they are here, well, we've got a guest schedule for 1.30. And for 2 p.m., our friends from NDC will come over, 1.30 YMCA. Now, uh, let me double check my calendar just to make sure that I didn't miss some reason, you know, look at it incorrectly. Well, we we're supposed to have our friends over at the Kim Arts Festival, yep. That's what the calendar says, so it's in writing, it must be correct. Well, if Myerson team comes across, we'll join in. If not, we'll find another space for them at some point. But for now, it's going to be open line, it looks like. One of the reasons I love the, the beautifulness, I guess, the beauty of radio is that it's instantaneous. But it also means that you better be on your game. Let's take this call. Hey, welcome. Thank you for sharing. To share something with you. How are you today? I'm okay, thank you. Um, last week sometime, uh -huh. I got a, a call from a man saying that um, my debit card has been debited $400 and $1,100. Hmm. Um, he spoke very fast and he asked me, was asking me other stuff, and I said, no, don't ask me those things. And then to the end, he said, you shop online? And I said, never. I never mm -hmm. shop online. But I got the same call last year. I remember I got the same call last year. But since then, last week, I've been calling one week now, every banking day to my bank, and I cannot get a human being, apart from the operator, to answer the phone. I called just now, and the operator answered, transferred the call, but nobody answers it. So I don't know what else to do. Is it possible that in your instance, uh, your bank of choice, is it that you can either A, make it to them in person? Not these days. Okay. Dwayne. Yes, ma'am. And then, um, secondly, uh, is there a particular staff member at the bank that you might be somewhat acquainted with? Yes, and she's on vacation until tomorrow. Right. And, and as we listen to you, we recognize how it's uh, becoming increasingly challenging for many uh, reasons. Yes, uh, I have arthritis, real bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I recognize the, the difficulty. I guess you know I'm thinking with what came on national reps, you know, Miss Ashley and, and Miss Denise uh, for sharing. Not, I don't bank with Kim no, I, I uh, yes, ma'am. So I, I didn't want to come on while they were on because I've never banked with them. Yes, ma'am. The bank I banked with for today is mm -hmm. my fifty-first anniversary living here. Mm -hmm. Is CIBC. Right. And, 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 you know, this was saying as they were talking, that, that announcement or reminder that their in house call center and then the card security team, you know, they're here on island, that makes a difference in that it shows an investment in local personnel, but it also not only shows a commitment to the country and, and its economy and its growth, but it may allow us to have a easier, you know, more accessible sort of route 
not to their team. If, if I could just get somebody locally apart from the operator to answer the phone. <laughs> yep. I mean, and I have worked at certain places here and seeing those people sit at their desk and watch the phone ring mm -hmm. and never answer it. They always just watch it ring and I don't know I think it may be have to have their private number because I've seen it at many places I've worked here. Right. It is uh, immigration. Mm -hmm. It is one thing to leverage the technology is another one to perhaps believe they can do uh, what maybe it's not doing because we as the the human being is an attentive nor available, you know. I don't know what mm. I mean. Um Yes well. I don't know why people do this. You go to work to work, mm -hmm. and if somebody didn't really want to call you, they wouldn't call you. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing everything I do the old-fashioned way still. Nothing online. Well. That's how I, and when they <laughs> tell me, oh, things are going to change, and that is going to change, and that is going to change, mm -hmm. well, they're giving no interest anyway. So go back to the old way you used to keep your money. We might because see they're some. not giving you any interest. Yep. And when you call, you can't get a human being, the, the person you want, for days. Mm -hmm. They're showing you no interest and they're paying none. Huh? They're not paying you any interest on your money and they're showing you no interest as a customer. Right? Well, I was working at a certain place and a senior person called me about another senior person and I was just a temp mm -hmm. he said is she there I said yes she is here and I didn't want to do what he said where is she I said she's sitting at her desk watching her phone ring put her computer on the screensaver listening to cricket and looking in a book to see how she's going to make her next dress and that person was there for donkey's years. Hmm. You yes, know what she started doing? Passing over her work to me. And I was a temp. And sooner or later, head office came and saw me. Mm -hmm. Because you know what I did? Everything I did for her, I initialed it. Right. Well, so they found out what was really happening. Yeah. And... um. We're now seeing the police issue a press release warning people because the plural of person is people as well. It's of a phone scam targeting people in Cayman as on the 8th of April. So maybe part of what you're getting. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got my friend's picture, some of mm. you know very well, on my screen. Mm -hmm. And she's like, long time no see, how are you, this and that. And I mm -hmm. oh, I miss you all so much. Mm. And talking and talking, the person said, have you heard a good thing that happened to me? Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, what it is? Now yeah. I've gotten this a million times. Yeah. So I said to, to the person, I said, you are not so-and-so, and you're an African scammer, and everybody knows about you. Give up on Cayman. <laughs> All right. And I called my friend, she wasn't there, her helper was there, and I told the helper that, tell her that somebody is using her, her picture mm -hmm. to wow. trick other people. See that? Yeah. All right. And but sooner or later they ask you other personal questions. But it's, this call is for people to know it is happening. It looks real because her picture is even there. Yeah, well, I hope you get through, you know, and thanks for, you know, being persistent and sharing, and I'm sorry that you have that experience. Respectful of your, our scheduled guests have now arrived, and uh, we've got a full slate uh, for each segment. So respectfully, let's just pause, we can get our guests seated, and we can have that revealed discussion. Stay tuned. Discover your dream home with Cayman Nationals Home Loan. Get up to 95% financing, repayment up to 40 years, and just a 0.5% commitment fee. Your interest rate, depending on your risk factors, it'll be fixed or variable. 
Plus, you get a pre-approved credit card. This is a limited time offer. Dial 949-8300 or email lending at caymanational.com today. At Doctors Hospital, we know life happens, and usually when you least expect it. So when unexpected medical issues arise, you need quality care close to home. Located in the heart of Georgetown, our accomplished team of physicians and medical staff treat minor urgent conditions such as migraines, chest and abdominal pain, shortness of breath, burns, broken bones, open wounds, and more. 24 hours, 7 days a week with no appointment necessary. Peace of mind is important when life happens. At Doctors Hospital, we're always here just for you. Need to speak to someone? Call 949-6066. Digicel has teamed up with Capella. We're giving away tickets for you and a friend to attend Cayman's biggest music festival. Win two Capella tickets. Simply activate a 30-day Prime Max plan or be an active postpaid customer and you could be our lucky winner. Don't miss out on this epic event. Go to your nearest Digicel store today or the My Digicel app for your chance to win. Digicel, better connected. Now, more than ever, supporting your immune system is crucial to helping your body fight off illnesses like the common cold, the flu, and COVID-19. At Valley Med Pharmacy on Walker's Road and in Buttontown, we carry all the essential vitamins and minerals to help support your immune system and improve your overall health. Some of our top immunity support picks are vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, elderberry, and quercetin are the popular 7-in-1 immunity support. Our pharmacies are always on hand to help guide you and answer any questions. Visit Valley Med Pharmacy on Walker's Road or Buttontown. Live happy, live healthy with Valley Med Pharmacy. You know who this is? The same old girl that went to Hollywood and Panama? Well, guess what? The fun ain't done yet. Because this year, I'm going to country concerts in Denver. I got kick up my heels in Times Square. And I got to find my way to Barbados. I got to keep living the dream with Cayman Airways. We so blessed to have them. I tell you what though, this old girl feeling younger than ever. Make your travel dreams come true with Cayman Airways, offering international non-stop flights from Cayman to New York, Miami, Tampa, Denver, Los Angeles, Panama, Kingston, Mobe, La Saiba, and Havana, plus Barbados. Enjoy free rum punch, free in-flight entertainment, free seat selection, and free meals on select flights. Call 949-2311, contact a travel agent, or visit Cayman Airways Com. Hey there, K-Man. Have a few minutes to spare? Your Ministry for Housing has just launched the public survey for the Cayman Islands Housing Policy and Strategic Plan. We are all about making our island home even better. We need your help. It's your thoughts and ideas that will shape our housing policies for the future. Your voice matters, and it's easy to get involved. Just visit cihousingplan.org and let your voice be heard. Plus, you could catch some cool gift cards just for sharing your ideas. Don't miss out. Open through April 16th, head to cihousingplan.org or go to the ministry's Facebook, Instagram, X, or LinkedIn now and be a part of the conversation. Your input matters more than you know. Let's make K-Man's housing future brighter. Together, your voice, your future. Take the survey today. Radio K-Man's Talk Today. What is on your mind, Cayman? Hey, welcome back, and thanks very much for joining us. And island life should be a lot more leisurely, more relaxing. So here's a time through our executive director of the Cayman's Festival, Mr. Marius, for people to do just that. They say, you know, music soothes the soul. Uh, to you, my friend, welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting us. Um, I've always mentioned this. I feel like home here, and uh, we'll continue our... 20th anniversary celebration with uh, another series of events this week and we would like to talk about those. Well thank you for coming and sharing because I think sometimes when you live in a space for a long time and especially a relatively speaking a small space on an island everything may revolve around the sea and as much as I love it sometimes you want something else and uh, the same sights but music uh, the same songs sung or performed by different you know, entertainers can resonate differently. So I think Cayman has a lot to offer. 
I admire it's through you. Would you introduce a guest? You want to maybe design it? Again? Yes. First, uh, this time we uh, we partner with uh, with the Chamber Music Festival called Sonoro, and we have in the studio with us the executive director Razvan Popovic, and also in the Sonoro family, we realize that we can build in Cayman a nice side of music, music therapy, I and we have a music therapist with us today, Angelica Posto. Right. And, and, well, not only because I think as gentlemen we say ladies first, but when Myers was sharing with me, not just music therapy, but the idea uh, you're working in, in psychiatry uh, as, as, as music does much for many of us. Uh, I love country music. <coughs> We're told that you know, if you play the country song backwards, the guy gets the horse, the girl, you know, he's no longer a drunk. Um, but music can somehow make that feeling worse or better, presumably. For you, Miss Angelica, music, music therapy, music and psychiatry. I mean, how does that, how does that literally, without any pun intended, how does that play out? You described it already very, very well. I mean, music is the universal language, and we know mm. precisely that there is no human being that doesn't have a reaction to music. Mm. So the it's it's more the most direct language that we react to, and the nonverbal communication. So either it is psychiatry or children in the kindergarten or elderly people who lost their ability to speak, mm -hmm. they, we use music to get in contact with them. And I'm, I'm very happy to do this job and I'm extremely happy and honored to be here in the islands because we bring exactly that uh, way and the path of communicating together through music and together with the um, Sonoro family we established this uh, collaboration uh, in order to also reach maybe a side of the population that um, has not such an easy access to, to music and we want to include them also in, in our projects so that's why we brought music therapy here so I'm very grateful also to Marius that he took this in consideration and to Rosvan that we started this collaboration a while ago so it's going well people people know that music does well so they they choose this um, therapy form in order to y activate communication and and uh, well-being and uh, self-perception and self-awareness so I guess this is what we need the most in these times and this is it that idea of you know self-reflection uh, we're introspective but I gather from you know well, my view is a little learning is a dangerous thing. Knowledge is empowering, equalizing, but it helps us. And and if music can affect a plant, as we've seen in research, if music can cause you as a person exercising to feel motivated, if the music uh, has an impact on your neurons, it's uh, published. Music should be something that we all. As a musician, you know, yeah. I, I know I found out many many years ago that what we can do with music is yeah. to put the soul of the people in the right place. We mm -hmm. just put it back, you know, uh, because what we create in the spaces w which we fill with music yeah. is just a uh, completely um, rewarding and fulfilling and calming space. You know, where people yeah. can reflect, as you wonderfully said, and where um, where they slowly slowly can. Come down. I know on the islands people are mostly cooled down. It's not like in Europe <laughs> or in New York or you know in the big towns where we spend a lot of time. But I think I'm, I'm very happy that we bring now Sonoro here. Uh, this year we celebrate 19 years. So uh, Marius uh, and his team give the the 20th anniversary feeling already f to us also. You know, so next year will be 20. Mm -hmm. so, I, so somehow my feeling is that performing this week here in Cayman in Cayman Islands is like starting our anniversary tour. You know, uh, like you know from next year. You know. So it's kind of a very s s feeling of celebration, what yeah. actually a festival should be. Well, musicians take tours. Uh, Bill Joel has a residency at Madison Square Garden. Maybe this is your, your sort of kickoff tour. <laughs> uh, Maya has also shared that, <clears throat> you have to forgive me, I've been presenting all morning. <clears throat> Don't know what happened. Anyway, they say I shouldn't talk before I come on to, to talk. But in, in speaking to our students earlier, I was just questioning it. Partly in, in preparation for today, but partly in reflecting what Marius was sharing. You're the son of a musician. Uh, you've traveled, you've performed in musical festivals across the globe. And there is something about music. It doesn't matter um, that that particular venue. The song seems to resonate with each audience in a particular way. And I think, as uh, you know, Angelica said, it's a universal language. So whether it's at a library or whether it's in some big symphony in Eastern Europe, that thing 
has something as positive impact in that individual at that time because of what is transpiring. If I might then, Miss Angelica, back to the the psychology and the psychological impact of music on a person. Do we are we conscious of how it's affecting us? Are we conscious of how it's affecting those around us? I guess at the beginning we're not. We're just doing it for pleasure to oh. experience something nice, something pleasant to get uh, transcended in an atmosphere that mm. we wish to have and it's very interesting that um, the science shows that also the sad music is very beneficial and we do produce uh, mm. uh, happiness hormones and dopamine even if we listen to sad music so this speaks very much for the fact that when I choose the music that I listen to I want to transcend in this state yeah. in this oasis so I guess uh, that's the path that we take to music therapy because we use it intentionally we use it for the yeah. people who uh, close themselves and isolate themselves from feelings and recognizes how do I actually feel so we are in search of this positive experience and I often get asked if music therapy is something that lasts but I think it, the positive experience is something that we take with us at mm. all times I'm glad you share that because I, I in talk to the students you know I said we need to be intentional purposeful and there were still there were three parents there and I know one of them like I do. We're driving, we have the music on. But are we conscious? Are we intentional, purposeful? We, you know, we're riding around, the children are bouncing, and we're singing. But should we be more? Uh, I, I played a clip from a song that I used to like. You know, sad songs always make me cry. Right? And they laughed. I go, not only at my singing, but the fact that, you know, here's a song that was so old. But as you shared, it could be a sad, you know, song, but that melancholy can actually produce happiness. It almost seems... Huh. Is that is that true? Yes, and it's healthy. It means embracing the feelings that we have. We have a bright spectrum of feelings, and we cannot be just happy and uh, energetic. We need to slow down and to realize where am I at with my feelings. And this being present, I think it's a long-term exercise and a long-term experience. And I don't think it's uh, healthy to be all the time present. It's nice to get in the flow that mm -hmm. you get uh, transported with the music. But I think from time to time, each of us should take a moment and just listen to to a piece of music and just be there for five minutes and do nothing else you know it creates empathy yes and, and with that music can do that because it, it, it's a quietness I think uh, the most important thing uh, why concert live concerts are the most important is because uh, mm -hmm. that feeling which people have together this togetherness and the vibrations coming in a concert hall in a church in a original space or uh, yeah. as Marius chose here on the island as you know we don't have the Carnegie Hall on, on the Cayman you know we also don't need it you know <laughs> so in all these spaces people come there and listen to music and music it's not a noise anymore like a background background um, feature you know it's just live so people can and also we choose in Sonora we always chose very carefully the first piece of the concert or if there is an interval, the first piece after the interval. Because this piece is sometimes not sacrificed, I would say, but people come, you know, in a hurry, you know, they find parking place, they come from work, you know, a little bit, a little bit kind of un, un, uncalm, uncayman, you know. <laughs> so, and then, and then, yes, then they come and then after the first piece, which has to not to be the most, let's say, most fragile, most tender, most calm, most sad, you know, a little bit something which gets yeah. them into into the atmosphere and also we often moderate the concerts so mm -hmm. we also talk few words explain a bit the piece and i think sometimes if few words are spoken well and from the heart and manage to reach the heart of the listeners and get their uh, concentration then the quality of listening increases tremendously it provides context yes it gives us a chance to maybe understand some of us are very open-minded and willing to embrace and will go and we may not understand what we listen to. We may not know, you know, the piece was by some you know, original composer mm -hmm. this morning or something that's centuries old. But if you have context, mm -hmm. that may help the brain to be a little bit more engaged mm -hmm. in a positive way. Yes, and it helps me be stay connected to their world. Like mm -hmm. there's two worlds meeting and... Um, the the surroundings where am I at? They seem familiar. Like mm -hmm. 
when I listen to the music you like, I will get a, a sense of how you how yeah. you interact and how is your world. So it, this exchanging of worlds is very special. And it's a, I always say music is a privilege and it, we should facilitate it to everyone as much as we can. And this is what we do during music festivals and this is what happens during music therapy. All right. Well, whenever we come, you know, the governor came on, my ass, I make it not just a, a privilege, but a right. Everyone must listen to music. <laughs> that would be something. <laughs> now, how can we? Because, I mean, you're celebrating the, the 20th year. Uh, yes. Um, this week has three parts, let's say. Yeah. One are the concerts. Uh, we'll start tomorrow at the Jasmine Villa. Uh, we'll continue at the public library on Wednesday. We will continue after that at Anglican Church on Thursday and we'll finish at John Gray High School on Friday. All the information there on our website, mm -hmm. uh, com. Um, and uh, you can find tickets and everything there. Uh, the second part is the educational part. Um, the sonora artists that they are here, top um, top artists in the string music and mm -hmm. piano, uh, they will uh, work with our students. The result of this will be highlighted in the last concert on Friday. And also, as we mentioned, the um, uh, music therapy part that uh, Angelica and uh, she had met today with uh, Georgiane Morgan, and they will uh, they will put together a plan for this week. Yeah, and I miss Georgiane. She, for those who know her, I mean, we had her the privilege of having her join us on our monthly mental health matters. And from the psychologist's perspective, especially within our schools, I think increasingly as adults, uh, parents and teachers in particular maybe we're not mindful of what our children are listening to, how we can connect with them, how we can guide them. Um, I, I, I always apologize, I say Miss Angelica, but Marius reminds me of Angelica. <laughs> okay. See? Or Angelique. Angelique. Mus musical <laughs> you mentioned uh, Georgiane, which I, I uh, met uh, um, a minute ago, and it's so, I have to admire her work mm -hmm. and how she has established a music therapy job that's so important mm -hmm. in school, in times we were talking where, where virtuality is, is earning so much space, yeah. you know, and territory. So we need to offer to the students also different types of communication and let them be creative. I, I think this is what is missing in in school systems that focus so much on on performance and results and good results so i think music therapy gives them the opportunity to be creative and to show themselves the way they are even if they had they have some disorders which are normal in yeah. the in the levels of development that we have all been facing in in puberty so i think it's a great great opportunity for the schools here and i'm sure we will have a fruitful collaboration and i think it fosters connection it, it makes us not not just stop and reflect, you know. How many of us have been in a space where a song just you know, comes on? I, I love classical pieces, and there are some that even to this day I'm not sure what it is, but it's familiar to me, and I like it, and I go, oh, bitch, it's going to get quiet. And it does, because I'm familiar with it. It's going to get loud again. And my ass explains to me what that means, but it does something to you as you anticipate. Not unlike, you know, that you're watching the match of your favorite football game, and you know he's going to score the goal, but you also know he's going to take the free kick and miss it, or the penalty. This expectation. <laughs> That's why we chose for every concert a particular yeah. program. Yeah. So you are going to hear uh, music from English composer, from German, Austrian, Romanian, Hungarian, Czech. So it, it's a, it's a, the, the public, I think, the more they will come to, all the, the, the more concert they will come, the mm -hmm. more they will understand what meant this Sonoro week uh, in Cayman Islands together uh, during the, the uh, Cayman Arts Festival. Mm -hmm. And uh, the festival, is con the concept is like a puzzle, you know. So the more you listen, the more you're going to uh, be enriched by the music which we bring to the island. I'm sure that most of the pieces uh, will be played for the first time, will sound for the first time here yeah. on the island. And this is what is so important. A small space with a relatively small population can have such a global access. And Myers has reminded us over the years that there are many people for whom we would never, no matter where we're from, would never get to see them if we weren't here, including your, your performance, your interaction. As Georgiane and her students are going to benefit greatly from your, you know, your input. What would that do for them? You know, only the future will tell. So... Very grateful that you're here. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Thank you so much. We hope that people will come. We mm -hmm. have four, as you mentioned, four events. They can pick any of them and uh, I hope they will enjoy it. Well, I hope they pick them all. I mean, pick, oh, that will be great. Yeah. So, okay. Wednesday, the library is six. What uh, time on Wednesday? Uh, the library is six to seven, 7 p.m. on when, on Thursday at uh, Saint uh, Saint George's Anglican Church is from seven to eight p.m. Mm -hmm. and on Friday at the John Gray High School Performance Hall from five to six p.m. So right. you have six to seven, then you have seven to eight, then you have five to uh, to six, and then on Friday. Uh, if, who wants more information on our website, caymanartsfestival.com or uh, inquiries at caymanartsfestival.com. I will be behind this email. And also 9225550. Always eloquent, always gracious. Thank you. Thank you. If Thank you, you wish, any final thoughts? And then, of course, uh, Mr. Rathan. Oh, surely we will play a few minutes after 7, 5 <laughs> or 6 for the Cayman public. So <laughs> always, always more surprises are prepared for the audience an encore always so more music is better for us and i think this is the my final words is in being in touch and taking this experience you said what we will bring i think it will bring a lot of exchange because we're all so different and we bring with us so many experiences yeah. and this is nice to share and as the musicians they are all individually different and they come from different countries with different perspectives and it's so nice to share that through music it may be a recognizable or unfamiliar piece but what it is, is people performing with heart, with love, to be fulfilled. All right, so thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you for, for having, having us. Invitation. Always a pleasure, Mario. So as they launch their 20th anniversary, we celebrate ours. This is a good place to kick it off, right? Absolutely. Right. Thank you all. Dear listeners, please stay tuned because as the, each segment brings something new and engaging. From boat days to beach gatherings, Leave the catering to Subway. Choose from small and large sandwich platters, double meat wrap platters, and top it off with, with optional, optional cookie, cookie platters, platters for, for dessert. dessert. Or ask about our Subway box to go with the option of six inch or foot long sandwich, one, one cookie, cookie and, and one, one bag, bag of chips. chips. For all occasions and celebrations, let Subway focus on the food so you can focus on the fun. Visit subway.ky for catering options. Subway. Eat fresh. At Doctors Hospital, we know life happens, and usually when you least expect it. So when unexpected medical issues arise, you need quality care close to home. Located in the heart of Georgetown, our accomplished team of physicians and medical staff treat minor urgent conditions such as migraines, chest and abdominal pain, shortness of breath, burns, broken bones, open wounds, and more. 24 hours, seven days a week with no appointment necessary. Peace of mind is important when life happens. At Doctors Hospital, we're always here just for you. Need to speak to someone? Call 949-6066. Find your dream car with a Cayman National Vehicle Loan. Enjoy 100% financing, up to eight-year repayment, and a 7% fixed interest rate for the first five years. For eco-friendly cars, we'll waive your commitment fee. This only applies to new vehicles. Call 949-8300 or email lending at caymannational.com today. You know who this is? The same old girl that went to Hollywood and Panama? Well, guess what? The fun ain't done yet. Because this year, I'm going to country concerts in Denver. I got kick up my heels in Times Square. And I got to find my way to Barbados. I got to keep living the dream with Cayman Airways. We so blessed to have them. I tell you what, though, this old girl's feeling younger than ever. Make your travel dreams come true with Cayman Airways, offering international non-stop flights from Cayman to New York, Miami, Tampa, Denver, Los Angeles, Panama, Kingston, Mobe, La Saiba, and Havana, plus Barbados. Enjoy free rum punch, free in-flight entertainment, free seat selection, and free meals on select flights. Call 949-2311, contact a travel agent, or visit Cayman Airways dot com CUC advisory customers are advised of a scheduled outage on Tuesday April 9th between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. for Point Dexter Road from Melrose Landing to the security gate at Patrick's Island and all side roads 
For more information, please contact CUC's customer service team at 949-5200 or email service at cuc.ky. Hey, Cayman, this is Ilian Powery, your Miss Universe Cayman Islands 2023. Do you want the opportunity to help shape the future of youth and sports in the Cayman Islands? All you have to do is complete the National Youth and Sports Survey found at gov.ky forward slash YSP. This is your chance to make a lasting impact on our community. Have your say today, Cayman, at gov.ky forward slash YSP. This announcement is brought to you by the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Heritage. Radio Cayman's Talk Today. What is on your mind, Cayman? Hey, welcome back and thanks for joining us. You know, always a pleasure. I think whenever we do things together that we make it that much better. <laughs> Such a song. Well, should we say the face of the YMCA? Oh, thank you. Well, I <laughs> but I am just, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm just one of the many, uh, and I take no credit because it's really our team members day in, day out at the programs and our sites who deliver. So just very proud of them and, and happy to be able to ch chat with you about them uh, yeah. this afternoon. I gather that because of your presence today you know, being so significant that even the, the son, you know, had to sort of show his respect <laughs> and, and <laughs> bow its head. Is that true? <laughs> Well, uh, so someone said, so <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. Uh, it's actually a very special day. We're kicking off pretty much the month of April yeah. after two exciting weeks of Easter. Uh, we hosted camp, uh, hundreds of children, a lot of fun, a lot of learning. So this is yeah. kind of like our next phase for the year. This is where I think as I talk to you increasingly, I'm mindful that as a community, there are many, many changes. There are things that are happening, not just constantly, but sometimes at such a you know, a faster pace than maybe some of us can appreciate right. or would even would want. This is where we need to come together, hands and yes. hearts, bringing our time, our talent, and our treasure to make a meaningful impact. Yes, and um, that encompasses a lot of what we do. Uh, this week uh, that comes up uh, for us is really just highlighting what the team members do and how they educate themselves to bring a better us as a mm -hmm. community. Uh, the Five Day of Action, that's one of the campaigns the YMCA leads worldwide, and Cayman Islands joins them mid-April, just to ensure that uh, we continue with education, not only for our staff, also our leadership team, our volunteers, but protecting children is so important. It's a priority for the Y. It's, I know, a priority for many organizations on island too. And there's many doing, um, or we are all doing our part uh, mm -hmm. But it's important that the community learns more about this, especially uh, in an important month that comes up for us. All right. Well, that is the voice of the director of Mexico, right? Philanthropy and Community Engagement of the YMCA, Ms. Paula Juarez Robinson. Yes. Have oh, I said it right this time? <laughs> you did. Uh, I, I was practicing <laughs> like five seconds before. <laughs> no, but as you share, many of us can actually listen and say, hey, I can buy into that. It's... it's what we want for our, our, our country. I had a wonderful visit yesterday with a friend and the reminder of our core values. Right. Uh, for me, it's not political in the sense of electioneering. Mm -hmm. It's not even uh, something that I posit in from a personal ethos only. You want to save society, one that nurtures its own, one that is elderly as well as the youth feel engaged, feel safe, yes. feel like they sense a, a sense of hope. And yet we are so busy in our minds, you know, very, very, very justified. But even today with the, the sun, you know, doing its dance in a way that I'm here in the studio. You know, I can't get out there to see it just yet. Are our students in the classrooms going to be deliberately taken outside in a safe way mm -hmm. to look at it? Because it's going to happen again tomorrow, right? And then the next day. I mean, this happens every day, right? <laughs> no, it's today and it's only today. Yeah. Um, and I know of many of students, actually, who were able to access some of the, I guess, protective glasses, you right. call it. Uh, there was a lot of interest for that. And it's just so interesting to see uh, the youth uh, trying to, you know, learn more about the world and... Um, mm. I mean, STEM being such a, a, an important element these days in education and also having every single teacher or educator or someone in the educational facilities guiding them. Um, some of these type of guidance is what we also do within our programs, the youth leadership programs and all the sports programming that we have at the Y because you're, you're building character 
Yeah. Uh, you're instilling values, um, and especially in sports, I mean, sportsmanship, teamwork. So yeah. that translates a lot on what the children back, go back to do at their classrooms, at home. And many of these are learning experiences they get at the Y. Yeah. And this is where that, that idea is. I was thinking about a discussion. Whether it's the solar eclipse that you may never see again, mm. or whether it's a solar eclipse that, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll get to it. And you don't engage safely, sensibly, True. Uh, whether with your students or even, you know, in, in a quiet moment. Mm -hmm. But what you were sharing that Hawaii is trying to inculcate those values that it wants to instill, those values that it wants us to be mindful. Uh, the competition can be just as much a, a collaborative approach as it is about winning. Mm -hmm. That team building reflects in the corporate or the work environment as it does in the family. And yet if we don't put that foundation now, where as a community we come together, provide this, and make it accessible to all. Right. We see the negative consequences immediately, mm -hmm. yet we don't appreciate the positiveness till maybe a long time down the road. Yeah, you're spot on. You touch base on two of the, I guess would I would label them the most critical things that uh, mm -hmm. we will definitely continue to do because that's at our core, mm -hmm. is instilling the values in everything that we do, every of our programs. And also the other important part is just like really building up that character for them. Yeah. Uh, we got girls and boys um, from very young age, teenagers. So we're really building the Cayman's generations of new leaders. Yeah. And, and the thing is that, you know, we can talk about, and sometimes we joke and we don't even realize the different nationalities that are here. Maybe mm -hmm. we buy the official narrative of 134, I joke and say it's a thousand plus. But those people, whether they're remaining Cayman, whether it becomes a base and they travel elsewhere or they eventually relocate. Right. These are people who will be impacted by where they go, but will also impact where they go by how they've been impacted by while they were here. Yes. And that makes the country, the world, uh, well, yeah, good or bad. Um, definitely. And they will definitely do a, a better world with the YMCA stories mm -hmm. they will carry with them. Yeah. And I think it speaks uh, very, very much of the um, dedication that the staff has with the students, if it's the after school program or the children at our camp programs, mm -hmm. which are about 14, 15 weeks a year or the sports. You know, we have volunteers coaching for baseball. We have a, a great support for the new Youth Football Academy season two this year. So it's important that every of our team members, staff or not staff, meaning volunteers or paid employees, they continue to deliver what the mission and the vision of the why is, which is right. really also for all, like you mentioned earlier. And, and I was thinking back, you know, today, maybe and it's not because it's a Monday. Mm -hmm. and I wouldn't even say because there's an eclipse, that whether we're in England or whether we're here in East End, mm -hmm. we can see the eclipse to some extent. And I would say to everyone, please be sensible and safe as you go about to try to, to look at it. But make it a conversation. But here is the why. And as Pastor Randy first introduced the, the idea way back when that we're trying to bring it here. Yeah. You have an organization that has a history, but it has a, a value system that transcends, you know, many, many societies and we can subscribe to it because they're sensible. They yes. they make good sense. Absolutely. And many of um you were mentioning earlier about different nationalities on the island. Well, many of these nationalities have had a why back home. You know, yeah. Canada, USA, UK. I mean we're around the globe. Mm -hmm. And Cayman is not just Grand Cayman. We have an after school program in Cayman Brac. Mm -hmm. So reaching uh, or yeah, that brother outreach, not just our island here. It's so, so important. I mean, YMCA was just at the agricultural show in Cayman Brac a couple mm -hmm. of weeks ago, and they had such a great booth for activities, parents and children to engage and enjoy during the festivities there. So it's um, it's beautiful element that we can incorporate into events like that. Yeah, and I think it's what, you know, that sort of the global approach to the Y. Mm -hmm. There is this thing that is in any particular community with the shared values, but it can be tailored almost yes. to emphasize that particular need or that thing that is lacking in that space mm -hmm. or emphasize that thing that they want more of. Yes, and I mean, we're definitely trying to tailor as much as we can and we listen to the parents' feedback. Mm -hmm. I mean, Easter, we had a great activity where the children went camping, right? So that's like a tradition in the Cayman Islands. We wanted to make sure that our children were enjoying um safely and with a lot of fun which I, from seeing the pictures um i feel like i 
<laughs> I missed out on that. <laughs> it was such a great time. Uh, but also, as we continue to deliver these programs, our team members continue to educate themselves so that we can deliver quality consistently and um, make our parents, our volunteers, and the community proud of the work that we do. Yeah. And, and that is it. You know, we, we look at that young person, whether it's the 5-year-old or the 15-year-old, but even that 25-year-old who may... Yeah, may have returned from you know tertiary studies, or who may be working and considering what career choices, yes. uh, as a volunteer even can benefit and, and understand. But mm-hmm. as a uh, as a camper, and this is where we. So how do we? You said five days is of something that we're gonna be doing. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> um, in April we will have the five days of action. It's an educational campaign. Mm-hmm. This one absolutely brings uh, the community together, but mostly mm-hmm. our staff and leadership team mm-hmm. to. Uh, reinforce the educational elements of knowing what child abuse is, Mm -hmm. how to work on preventing it. But most important, if any uh, suspicion of, to report it. Uh, There are many um, elements in the training that the Cayman Islands Red Cross providing to us um, online can educate us in becoming more aware and better prep and equip our staff on how to actually act if any Um, scene of child abuse so that's the week where we all commit ourselves to even become more understanding and uh, be more proactive should the event occur and we actually do a pledge it's a commitment so throughout the week we have experts uh, sharing with us information about what it is to to understand better child abuse how to act upon it how to report the child uh, the YMCA has a child protection officer uh, there's two, actually, for our YMCA of the Cayman Islands. So they're also very keen on always teaching our own staff on better ways to understand what child abuse is. And we're trying to prevent this. It's uh, it's like having zero tolerance policy towards child abuse. And that's an important week coming in um, next week for us. And, and, and I'm glad that you share because it's five days of action. Mm-hmm. Many times we talk meaningfully. We want to do something, but we don't for whatever reason. And sometimes even though when we may act, it may be uh, not a proactive you know, response, it may be an emotive one. But if mm-hmm. we come from an informed position, we come from a space where you know, we understand what we're yes. going to do, how and when mm-hmm. and why, it makes that thing you know, that much more effective. Yes, and it's very valuable because uh, it's not just for us uh, as we deliver a program. It's for us in our communities. Yeah. It's for us back at home um, or if home is actually a different country when we go and visit. If we understand what child abuse is, we just should have this um, zero tolerance to it. So mm. as we educate our staff, we hope that also we pass on this education towards the generation that we are educating mm. via our programs too. And if we have uh, sort of a, a shared ethos, we see and understand and all can recognize what something is. And as you shared, have that zero tolerance to mm-hmm. it, and that darkness to light training that the Red Cross does. I believe every single one, you know, every adult, every parent in particular, mm-hmm. because it may cause us to see things yes. uh, in a way that we probably didn't quite appreciate. True. Uh, and I must also say the um, the government, uh, the Ministry of Education, has also emphasized a more local-ish mm-hmm. training, which we went through, as many educators and um, teachers may have gone through via the ministry. So that one is more focusing on, I would probably label it as Caribbean slash Cayman type of a scenarios or culturally, so that we are more, uh, we're watching more of a visual of what could happen here. Because mm-hmm. um, it, it is definitely a global issue. But if, when you localize it to your local community, it's like touches home. Yeah. So, and, and I think that's, I appreciate you sharing that as we speak to Ms. Paula, the idea that with the why and my growing understanding, it may have a program in some jurisdictions that focuses heavily on, say, education mm-hmm. or even housing or, yes. or sports. I think in the Cayman context, uh, yes, we are in the Caribbean, but what may be a practice in one jurisdiction may not necessarily be accepted, or nor should it be a practice in Cayman mm-hmm. in terms of our approach. Sure. And uh, participation by the wider community, a sensitization to what is here, yes. has to be something that, again, is an action, a deliberate, positive, you know, direct action 
and don't let it be a consequence of inaction. Yes. So how, yes. how I mean, how do we engage with, with the why? How yes. do we be a better partner? We are always welcoming of everybody reaching out to us via either our social media platforms or at email info at ymcacayman.ky. Mm-hmm. This past weekend, we were actually at the BK Big Fish Tournament at George Nyack Club. We will be back tonight. Yeah. Uh, they have a great award ceremony, so mm-hmm. we're hosting a raffle, actually part of our fundraising efforts. Uh, when we are in the public, we're always welcoming of everybody in the community reaching out, but as simple as an email or send us a Facebook, Instagram message. Yeah, And, and this is, I think, as we look at it, it, it doesn't matter in my mind you know, the age of that child, the school of that child, who the parents are. Mm-hmm. If the child is in their community, it's being impacted by what is or, or is not happening in the community. Yes. What are the values we instilled in? What are the expectations? How are we nurturing? Mm-hmm. Are we making it safe? Because that child may remain here for the next 100 years or in you know less than a month, the child may, have, because of the parent's decision, may be elsewhere. Yeah, they are we have. giving that child as much opportunity for a safe, successful, right. fulfilling life. Yes, and I feel like um, after school program that we host at the public and the government schools, mm-hmm. sorry, both primary and high school and Cayman Brac, mm-hmm. the curriculum that is instilled within the after school activities mm-hmm. is uh, very robust and also provides the opportunity for the students not just to learn. It's not a childcare type of setting where we're just babysitting, Um, excuse my language. It's really a very interesting curriculum where the learning curve is incredible for them from a very young age. Mm -hmm. So what you're mentioning, it just brings me back to that um, foundation with the um, almost 10 months a year of programming there. And, And this is, I think, what we need to be conscious of. Because in a world today, and one of the reasons that I do not like um, sort of social media is one of the reasons that I like it. Mm-hmm. It's right there. It's immediate. But what are we doing to engage and to leverage it so that, as you, like you said, you know, this is a fundamental, structured, deliberate, positive programming mm-hmm. that gives that child an awareness, yes. a skill set, yes. the tools, the foundation. Yes, and uh, many of these activities, sometimes they might not even uh, comprehend, for instance, what they're doing. But once they get into it, like if you have a a diary and you have a 15, 20 minute after your day of camp Mm -hmm. and you sit down with your, you know, your your friends from camp and and reflect upon your day and how you feel. Those 15 minutes are so crucial. And then so much you're going to go back home and tell your parents about the phone, what you learn, how good was it, uh, yeah. who do you make friends with. <laughs> yeah, and I think you know, the more we realize it, I think sometimes we only appreciate something years down the road, maybe because we've got more life experience, we've sensed to mature, yes. we've had that expertise and experience as a result. But if we can act now in a way and help to guide, mm-hmm. help to nurture, yes. and why should that young child, you know, make mistakes that just happens because we were not willing to stand in the gap and you know hold a hand if necessary right no and loud and clear i proudly say our team is committed Mm -hmm. um consistently quality and engaged they are in tune with the community they know the parents they know the children and some of our students from after school after school activities are actually our campers so yeah. our own staff that may work at after school would work some of the camp weeks. So they know, and that is such an important transition because they're aware of who the children are and how they have gone through the after school program. Now they have the activities at camp, it's a different setting, but it's still educational and fun. So it's, um, it's very valuable, the work that the YMCA staff is doing. And I'm mindful to share, and I certainly be got to be the, the more of us that are involved the more hands, the more eyes that are available, the more help yeah. that it can be. And it might, I think, you know, allow our children to have a wider net, mm-hmm. a wider access to people so that someone one day might be not, not his or her best self, but there's someone else to pick up the slack to compliment or to just, you know, tap in and say, hey, take a time, well, you know, let me do it for you. Mm-hmm. These are... These are our children, not just the future. These are the children that are the now. They are the now, yes. Yeah. And they demand to be the now, which is yeah. totally 
um, important to recognize. This is why, I, as I mentioned, the Red Cross, we also partner with like Alex Panton Foundation, yeah. the FRC. These are units that are doing such valuable work in our community and have expertise in certain areas. So as we mm -hmm. learn, especially during the five days of action, we have a lot of the content from the Y coming to our YMCA Cayman Islands, but we also reach out to them because they are experts in their fields. Well, this is where that, you know, sort of cross collaborative approach from the different yes. agencies. Mm -hmm. And as I invite you to share your closing thoughts, just as a quick you know, sort of programming preview, our next segment, we have reps from the NDC, oh, we great. have reps yes. from, you know, the Expansion Foundation, we mm -hmm. also have another entity that is engaged, and this shows what we can achieve when we, you know, come together and have that collaborative approach. Yes, so. we are not working in silos. Mm -hmm. This is a time where our Cayman Islands are working so much more closer as a community, and these agencies are so valuable. We partner with them uh, throughout the year at, at certain times. Uh, YMCA, very reputable work uh, globally, mm -hmm. so we're bringing to the Cayman Islands even more dedication of our own resources, our own staff, and our own training so that we can you know, provide for our community in both islands. Five days of action, huh? Yes. Well, I appreciate it. Close your thoughts if you wish. Well, we will be signing off our pledge if you commit to make your part today. Yep. So everybody's going to have a certificate at the end of the week, and uh, we will be on social media. <laughs> well, it it is it. so crucial, and it's not just you know a PR piece. It's not just lip service. We're actually making a commitment to ensure that that space for our own, ourselves, you know, our children, and those in the community are safe. And in a time like this, when we see behaviors by, by some that goes on challenge, behaviors by some that almost as if they can act with impunity. Uh, it, it shouldn't just inflame us and infuriate, mm -hmm. it should cause us to be so invested to ensure these, these actions do not occur. True. So I commend you and, and your team for taking that, you know, Fridays of Action. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any information you need is on our website, ymcakman.ky. We're a non-for-profit organization always looking forward to get more support from the community on this island. Well, uh, thank you. I mean, as your title has in it, community engagement, uh, thank you for sharing with us on a regular basis. And hopefully, as a community, we can continue to partner, not only to provide, but to protect our children as well. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Join us after the break. Please stay tuned. Information. Entertainment. Inspiration. Covering Grand Cayman, Little Cayman, Cayman Bright. Since 1976 till now. Radio Cayman in the Cayman Islands. www.radiocayman.gov.ky Check out our social media pages. Facebook, YouTube, X, formerly Twitter. Radio Cayman Headline News. With a look at your latest headlines, I'm Jevy Ebanks. Elton David Webster, Staten Omar Clark, David Samuel Bodden Jr., and Eliza Eunice Webster remain on trial for the 2016 robbery of Royal Bank of Canada in Georgetown. All four persons deny the charges. Today, the jury are hearing presentations of an audio interview conducted by the RCIPS with Eliza Webster. Testimony and cross-examination of the RCIPS officer who conducted the interview is expected to continue today, and the trial is expected to continue for another three to four weeks. In regional news, Canada says it will provide additional evacuation flights out of Haiti this week due to a spike in the number of requests to flee the French-speaking Caribbean community country, where gangs are seeking to remove the government of Prime Minister Dr. Ariel Henry from office. Foreign Minister Milian Jolie said in a message on X, formerly Twitter, that officials logged numerous extra requests leading to what was set to be the last scheduled government sponsored flight. A government organized flight left on Sunday and was expected to be the last of three as Canada would down its evacuation efforts in Haiti. In St. Lucia, seven leaders of political parties in the Caribbean have agreed on the establishment of the leader of the opposition political parties forum. The statement said the meeting took place last Saturday and that discussions were focused on the needs for higher awareness of the constitutional significance and responsibility associated with the office of the leader of the opposition. The leaders agreed to formalize a regional platform for closer collaboration at its next meeting, a date which has not yet been disclosed. That's a look at your latest headlines. I'm Jevy Ebanks. From Radio Cayman's newsroom, this is Headlines.
Radio K Man Talk today continues. Hey, welcome back, and thanks very much for joining us. And I think today has been a great day, and like many, because we're going to be a part of it. Now, the question is how positive and productive, and how deliberate and conscious are we going to engage? Well, we invite you to be a part of a discussion. You're going to hear three voices, maybe four. And then there'll be another one you go, oh, I hear voices, but what am I seeing? The idea is to pay attention. Don't condemn the messenger. Listen to the message. Well, from the NDC, the Prevention Specialist for the National Drug Council, Mr. Simon Miller. Very few as a specialist. Thank you for being one. Ms. D. Banks, thank you for having me as, as usual. Always a pleasure, Sir Simon. Always a pleasure. And, and I think that increasingly as we start to engage uh, in our communities and follow on to the discussion just prior with our friends over at the YMCA. We're no longer working, nor should we, in silos. It's a collaborative, uh, deliberate, conscious effort on our part as a community. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 you know, there's strength in numbers, you know, mm -hmm. so coming together and, and sharing, you know, our resources and our knowledge together. I mean, you know, that's, that's, that makes, every world of, makes a world of difference. All right. Um, as we're talking about, you know, raising awareness about alcohol, uh, use, abuse, misuse, um, not just in terms of National Alcohol Awareness Month, but the idea that, and I'm mindful, because I'll be guided by you. I'm so grateful, mm -hmm. both publicly and personally, to be able to reach out to you to ask something. But we see the use of alcohol as an accepted thing in our society, mm -hmm. at weddings and other celebrations, even at dinners and, and just socializing generally. Uh, and for some, it's not an issue. As my friends in another organization say, you know, for some people, one drink is too many, a hundred is, is not enough, mm -hmm. right? And we don't see the impact that it's having on that individual across the board in many facets, but yeah. it's legal, it's accepted, it's almost expected. I mean, we joke and say about the first miracle of anything recorded was, you know, saving the best wine for last because the water. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. do we understand it? Yeah, and, and you raise a very good point. Um, and my my colleague uh, that's sitting across from me, you know, we were having a conversation before we came into the studio, and, mm. and it's true. There's not a lot of people who recognize, well, is not willing to accept, accept the fact that it's a disease, yeah. you know, and, and you're rightfully pointed out that where you may take a drink and it be okay, somebody else, that may, that may not be the case. Right. You know, and I know she can very much chime in and, and cheer. Okay. Well, let's do this. We have another guest joining us. Yeah. We'll take a little early in the schedule a break. We'll come back. We'll invite you know, our other guests plus the other guests, and we'll have a conversation. You want to know what we're talking about? Well, sometimes you got to pay attention. But we ask you to join us after the break. Stay tuned. From boat days me, to just... beach gatherings, leave the catering to Subway. Choose from small and large sandwich platters, double meat wrap platters, and top it off with, with optional, optional cookie, cookie platters, platters for, for dessert. dessert. Or ask about our Subway box to go with the option of six inch or foot long sandwich, one, one cookie, cookie and, and one, one bag, bag of chips. chips. For all occasions and celebrations, let Subway focus on the food so you can focus on the fun. Visit Subway.ky for catering options. Subway, eat fresh. Digicel has teamed up with Capella. We're giving away tickets for you and a friend to attend Cayman's biggest music festival. Win two Capella tickets. Simply activate a 30-day Prime Max plan or be an active postpaid customer and you could be our lucky winner. Don't miss out on this epic event. Go to your nearest Digicel store today or the My Digicel app for your chance to win. Digicel, better connected. At Doctors Hospital, we know life happens, and usually when you least expect it. So when unexpected medical issues arise, you need quality care close to home. Located in the heart of Georgetown, our accomplished team of physicians and medical staff treat minor urgent conditions such as migraines, chest and abdominal pain, shortness of breath, burns, broken bones, open wounds, and more. 24 hours, 7 days a week with no appointment necessary. Peace of mind is important when life happens. At Doctors Hospital, we're always here just for you. Need to speak to someone? Call 949-6066. There you go, sir. Thanks for choosing JN Money Transfer. Why, thanks to JN Money Transfer, I can stay right here in Cayman and pay mama bills back home in Jamaica. Her water, light, phone, and other bills never late. 
every month I pay everything in one place. Make payments to over 30 companies in Jamaica through JN Money Transfer. Fast, affordable, convenient. Call 1-800-744-1163 for details. Start your day in the know. Don't miss a beat. Radio Cayman's 7 a.m. news keeps you informed every Monday through Saturday at 7 a.m. Brought to you by Cayman National, proudly serving the Cayman Islands since 1974. Radio Cayman's Talk Today. What is on your mind, Cayman? Hey, welcome back and thanks for joining us. I'm so grateful not just only to you know, the volunteers in our society who you know, assist constantly, tirelessly, but to those professionals in the various entities, from the NGOs and otherwise, and from the National Drug Council, you know, Mr. Simon Miller, and from the Alex Panton Foundation, the admin manager, Mr. Ann Kaufman. Thank you for, for joining us. I know that you've been in on a few times, as has Simon, but I don't believe that as a society we're mindful of the things that are happening in a society or how the things that happen impact the society, much less the individual. Mm. And as we talk about, you know, alcohol awareness and trying to bring the education and awareness of this impact. Miss Erin, are we so accepting or so unaware that things transpire and it's only after the fact that we go, oh, I could have seen that coming. But knowledge, they say, is empowering and equalizing. But if you don't know, you don't know. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I mean, one of the um, the goals of the Alex Banton Foundation is awareness mm. and advocacy mm. um, for the mental health of young people. Um, and why we are so keen to support an initiative that brings awareness to mm. um, addiction um, and, and drug use um, is that we recognize the connection or the correlation between mental health and drug use and substance abuse. Um, and, you know, obviously the focus of APF is, is our younger generation um, to just encourage them to acknowledge um, the the dangers of, yeah. of choosing a life of, of um, substance abuse um, and how that can impact their mental health. And then, you know, it's just kind of a, a cycle because, you know, some people will use drugs to cope with mental health challenges and then other times the drug use um, can worsen mental health challenges. Mm -hmm. So you know that it's that kind of unfortunate balancing act and, and mm -hmm. struggle that we kind of are trying to bring some awareness to, and particularly um, for our younger people. I, I mean, I speak on behalf of APF when I talk about the, young, the younger generation, just to, to let them know about a little bit more about that from now to inform yeah. their choices uh, for later on in life. You said to be for... One is to be for, um, you know, uh, preparation is yeah. key. Mm -hmm. So in addition to Mr. Simon Miller and Ms. Aaron Kaufman, we have a third guest. Mm -hmm. For our listeners, uh, you will hear a voice, you will not see an image. But uh, the message is more important sometimes than the message. That's why the Bible is still celebrated. Uh, to our, our third guest, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, it is a uh, blessing to be here. When we when we talk sometimes about educational awareness and trying to bring attention to something, to through you know that discussion to inform people, but to bring them to a space of action, or at the very least, if they can accept what's transpiring, maybe an appreciation that something is happening. Some of us drink. We we call ourselves social drinkers. Uh, some of us only drink on particular celebrations or at certain times. And I was trying to think if there's a society where alcohol isn't a form of, you know, sort of go-to when it comes to celebrating. Now, I didn't spend much <coughs> time, but I just got to came out of context and statistics indicate that there's a whole lot of drinking going on. I mean, there's a guy doing the thing and saying, you know, he's not going to stop drinking until the government is fixed, but <laughs> what really that be? So we joke and jest about it, but this is a very serious, yeah. sobering, you know, mm -hmm. topic. So help us to maybe understand some of it as we talk about, it. you know, alcohol awareness. Uh, oh, uh, well, I can speak from personal uh, mm. experience. I did not realize I was an alcoholic until I, until I started hearing stories that sounded mm. like me, mm. like mm. things that had happened. Oh. And um, I... It, so, you know, and I dithered, I dithered, I dithered about it. 
Nobody ever actually called me an alcoholic until uh, somebody asked me from this program, Alcoholics Anonymous, mm. uh, well, when you start, can you stop? And I thought about that for two days, and I could not remember one time where I had started drinking and voluntarily stopped. Mm. Huh. And uh, that's when I was convinced that I needed help. And that is the starting point for anybody. Um, if I may then ask, because I think what you just shared for some of us, we, oh, I can stop anytime. time. It's not a problem. Oh, I'm only drinking because, you know, it's a particular occasion. Mm. And some of us are in our minds and maybe by what we're told by our friends, oh, you so much fun when you have a drink, different things. And then sadly, there are some that, you know, if you think this person is bad, which they have a drink and they, they're, they're monsters, they're horrible. But how do we, is this something we need to do for ourselves? Can I drag you kicking and screaming into that mm. sobriety meeting? I mean, how does that work? Mm. Can you, I say you what I mean, you personally, you know, just. Uh, no, yeah. you, you can't. Nobody can call you an alcoholic. That is a term that you yeah. self label as. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there are um, AA meetings every single day in the Cayman Islands. Mm -hmm. um, in particular, there is a group called the AA Beginners Group Cayman mm -hmm. um, that is that follows the 12 steps, is, you know, a registered group in the Cayman Islands, um, affiliated with all the other AA groups here, and uh, it has its own website. It's an open meeting mm -hmm. that anybody, family, friends, um, the inquisitive mind wanting asking questions can come to it's very inclusive mm -hmm. um if you'd like i would i would like to read the aa preamble yes please which uh states what our parameters are would you please yes mm -hmm. alcoholics anonymous is a fellowship of people who share their experience strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organization, or institution. Neither endorses nor opposes any causes and does not wish to engage in any controversy. Mm. Mm. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And so there's that, that's called the AA preamble. And at any meeting worldwide, you will hear this preamble read at the start of the meeting. Mm -hmm. mm. So it's a, in today's parlance, I guess, Ms. Erin, you know, we hear about the safe space, uh, non judging mm -hmm. space. Uh, I can imagine that people want to go somewhere because somehow around the line, they feel something is not exactly what they want it to be for whatever reason. Maybe it's the prompting of, you know, a sibling, a spouse, or a good friend saying, hey, guy, you know, you just need to check yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I really, um, what stood out to me in, in that just now was the desire mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because... In my limited understanding of uh, the disease of um, alcoholism, um, is that you know it's it's not just as easy as as quitting, right? It um, so you know you to not require mm -hmm. the commitment, right? The requirement is the desire because you can work with that, right? Mm -hmm. Like and that desire might be a very long process, and it you know it may. You know, I imagine that it takes some time to get past just simply the desire. You can have the desire for the longest while, right? Yeah. Um, so I think that's so inviting and inclusive, as it as it says. That that stood out to me just now. Yeah. Likewise, and yeah. the time I was thinking, I wrote down the word addiction and and, and desire, mm -hmm. and I consciously and deliberately said you, know, you can't drag the person kicking and screaming yeah. as much as you would want to say to yeah. your brother uh, or your sister. So Simon, right. yeah, and, and and that's 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 the thing, yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. um, there's parents and people in the general public that, you know, run into you on a day-to-day -day basis and they're like, you know, I need help. And after having a conversation with them, mm -hmm. you know, the, the party that they're trying to get help to, 
doesn't have that desire, doesn't mm-hmm. have that motivation. Mm. But it's a wonderful thing to be living in a beautiful country like this that we have all these wonderful services here now. We have meetings on a da- yeah. daily basis. We Amazing. have people like our colleagues sitting across from me who is willing to embrace you and take you into that sp- that space that is becomes a fellowship, you yeah. know, and you know you have that support. That's a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. If I might then ask, that fellowship, that support, I think we all need that, but sometimes more so than at other times, whether it's the, the battling of the disease of addiction and the like. But how do we access that? And and is it that even though I would recognize whether it's an exercise program or you want to have a healthier lifestyle in terms of your dietary choices, you got that desire. But in this instance, you're dealing with more than just that. So how do you access it? What can we as a supporting cast do to help that person who may want to you know, to find that space where they're not subjected to this this addiction. Who wants to help me? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. That's a really, really good question. But Simon, give it to me to ask. Thanks, Simon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good question because uh, we accept that alcoholism is a disease. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's classified as a disease. Mm-hmm. There's not, as Aaron said, uh you can't willpower through it, right? right? And uh, willpower is of no avail. Um, the big book that AA uses terms it as, uh, you know, your sobriety is contingent upon your spiritual progress. Mm. There's two parts to it, obsession and compulsion. And with the obsession and compulsion, uh, w- what are you going to do about that? Well, you you know, ask your higher power, whether it's Confucius, Buddha, whether you're Hindu, Catholic, Christian, you ask your higher power to to relieve you, to help you. Yeah. And um, there are millions of stories of alcoholics being relieved of that obsession, and then they work the program of a, the 12-step program one day at a time with the help of their group, mm-hmm. uh, their group members, and uh, yeah. it's before 1945, the only cure for alcoholism, well, there wasn't any cure, but there's never been a cure, but the only thing you could do f- for an alcoholic was to commit them to jail or to uh, an asylum, mm-hmm. or they died. That was it. Yeah. We, we see that practice, and uh, even today, I'll be mindful because I'm not trying to be inflammatory. I speak even though I may think I know one little bit because I read or listened or attended a lecture or did a course. But the the mental illness that, that uh, of which you spoke, Miss Erin, I don't think sometimes we understand the impact and it's how it's probably made worse because of, of our drink. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How, how do we then as a community look at it and go, okay, the person needs to want to do this, needs to have that desire, but... Maybe there's a little bit more that we can do, should do. Yeah, I'll, I'm gonna plug for a second here because in prep in in preparing um, for these upcoming discussions, I was reading through some of the key findings of the National Drug yeah. Council survey, and oh my goodness, I'm I don't have it in front of me, but I know it was sixty something percent. Let's. Sixty something percent yeah. of students actually reported that they wanted more. Um, education around drug use yeah. um, and substance use. Why that is is you know I, I you know I don't know if we can deduct all of that, but the fact that they are interested in learning more and wanting more, um, you know, to me says, listen, this is out here. I'm hearing about it. I'd like to understand more for whatever reason, um, whether it be that they are. They are seeing more of it um, in their homes, whether it is that they're hearing more about it on the media, whether it is that they're being influenced in one way or another. Mm -hmm. Um, But the fact that they're saying, like, teach us more about this. We want to be more informed. um, That's, I think, why we are taking advantage of this opportunity to talk more about it. And it it speaks to the need for us to have more conversations and to help to, to, to support the young people that are saying, like, I want to learn more. Let us be informed so that we can make better. Yeah. I'm so glad that choices. you cued into that because I think uh, 
and I'm grateful to, to Simon and his colleagues at the National Drug Council mm-hmm. that, you know, a biannual survey that you do with the, the use and abuse of drugs within our, you know, our, our schools. Mm-hmm. Young people who are, you know, just barely out of their single digits mm-hmm. are engaging in, in drug use. Yep. And I wonder to what extent that we as parents in particular are cognizant of how we are influencing our children. Mm-hmm. That drink that we sit by the dinner table or that we celebrate or that drink that we pour off to work because of something or that amount of exposure that the child is seeing in a sports match during a commercial or you know and I don't mm-hmm. care for social media for the same reason the moronic way is being portrayed by this so called influencer mm-hmm. I had a term for that person way back then but now it mm-hmm. seems to be mm-hmm. more endearing I, I'm saying that consciously because I want our parents and adults to stop and open our eyes and stop being so stupid. Mm-hmm. Our children are being negatively affected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and we have to ask that same question in regards to our society. What yeah. what image are we portraying? Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, we 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 see that we have laws and policies in place, but are they implemented? You know, mm-hmm. um, you, you look at our country; it's changed. You know, over a short period of time. Yeah. You know, and now we are playing catch up in terms of the the social side of, of things. We're playing catch up. Um, and, and that's going to be a serious problem mm-hmm. if, if we don't catch up real quickly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We, we, we think back to um, U.S. President uh, Reagan's wife, Ms. Nancy, just say no. Mm-hmm. And yet we make fun of it, but just like the campaign then, no, if we can give people timely information that's accurate, we can give them support, mm-hmm. uh, they understand, Ms. Aaron. You know? Yeah, I, I just think reflecting on this conversation as well and just thinking that, you know, we need to give our children more of an answer than just say no. Yeah. We need to tell them why, you know, what, you know, what are the pros and cons, you know, of, because the reality is a lot of them are told you drink alcohol, it feels good. Da, 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 da. And you and instead of avoiding those conversations, um, you know, don't take you, you don't underestimate like the the. Yeah. intelligence of of our children and just ca- there they are no and if you're not talking to them about it mm. guarantee they will be talking to their peers about it yeah. and they'll be getting that information from somewhere so it's almost better like who do you want them to be getting that information from um if if it if it can be you if you can handle those conversations exactly. yep. or giving them more opportunity to get that be educated be informed mm-hmm. and and thank you for being so eloquent because when i was saying mm-hmm. for parents not to be so stupid our young people today they're absolutely intelligent. They inform, mm-hmm. they engage, they know what's happening. And after. they know where to find it. And mm-hmm. they know how to, they know how to yeah. find mm-hmm. answers to their questions, whether those answers are correct or not. They That's know where it. to find an answer. And they're not um, going to accept yeah. something just because you said it, right? right? And if you tell them, um, with their permission, I won't, I won't give up because I've done it with my own little closer, but with their permission, a group of students have said this. In Cayman, the drinking age is 18. Mm-hmm. In Florida, I think almost all the counties in Florida is 21. Other yeah. states is, is 18, right? I think still some states. But in Florida, it's 21. Mm-hmm. You're going off to university. Uh, there's an environment probably that exists now as it did when I was there. The little I understand, we're to 25 to drink because of the body and its impact. I got that from the NDC. Mm-hmm. And they went, well, why? And then mm-hmm. I could give them little bit of information mm-hmm. they could go online as we're talking and come back and oh yeah you know the brain this the heart that and the mm-hmm. kidneys this and the lungs that and the liver this mm-hmm. so mr simon yeah. your work is resonating with them in a positive way yeah well i, I am humbled um mm-hmm. you know we, we take every opportunity we mm-hmm. have um and every opportunity we get to try and share and bring that mm-hmm. awareness um in our mm-hmm. classrooms even with parents i mean just yeah. listen to what aaron and, and you were saying just now you know for and for those parents out there who probably is not comfortable enough to have a conversation. Right. You know, we offer a wonderful workshop at the National Drug Con- Council called A Parent is Speaking. Mm. You, know, you can book us out. You know, we'll come <laughs> to your church hall, to, <laughs> to your office. Yeah. And, I, and I'm, I'm tired of saying this. I'll come under a coconut tree. You know, just give me the, give me the space <laughs> and give me the audience and, and I'm there. Yeah. I, I believe if we were to engage you and do a conference call, you would come. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and he has, if it's Super okay. Super committed. <laughs> I've called him a number of times. I have a question. I have one question. Uh, and he's clarified that. He's confirmed what was being said. But we need to be committed to that. I'm told we have a, a call. Um, I can guarantee you, Miss Uni, like the rest of the team, following the, the direction, the example, Miss Pollitt, and like we freshly sanitized our studio long before everybody was in prison. 
uh, we, we have a, a strong work ethic here, but a sense of cleanliness is next to godliness. So as we don the headsets, let's take the call. Hey, welcome, welcome. Thanks for calling. Good afternoon, Mr. Moderator, and good afternoon to your highly esteemed guest, Quincy Brown here. And to you, a very pleasant and wonderful day, my friend. Yes, it is Alcohol Awareness Month, and uh, the dangers of alcohol and drugs at the foremost, at the, at, the, at the tips of our tongues right now. And just say no is just the start of it, because if you're suffering from trauma and other issues, mental health issues, it's more than just saying no. Yeah, yeah, I get that. We get mm-hmm. that. But it's a good place to start. Mm-hmm. Right now, I'm calling from the John Gray High School where Richard Barnes, thanks to the NDC Boys to Men and Jane Panton, Alex Panton Foundation, Richard Barnes is speaking right now to the year 10 here at John Gray, telling them the dangers of alcohol and drugs. So saying no is a place to start, but he's explaining to them his life story. Mm-hmm. He's 18 years clean and sober. And he's been in the John Gray all day. This is his last session. Of course, he moves about Grand Cayman, the high schools, etc. Yes, et yes. But we want to encourage West Bears to come out on Friday night. West Bears, come out Friday night at the John A. Cumber. Brackers, come out on Wednesday to the public library. Just say no is where it starts. I can tell you one thing. I'm glad I'm saying no these days as well. Thanks for taking my call. Stronger together. Thank you for sharing. Oh, and I'm, I'm mindful that we are busy and we engage. We're trying to be a very productive and perhaps for future discussions in partnership with both agencies and uh, and AA or others that we can have these conversations and that we listen to what is being shared, not just because of, you know, I call awareness month or some but as Quincy just shared, we don't see the impact on on our lives. We talk about the aftermath because of some mishap, some accident, some tragedy. Mm-hmm. But could that have been avoided? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I think to Quincy's point just now, the the saying no being the starting point. What what he's speaking to is that um, we have a, a we brought down a guest speaker, um, Mr. Richard Barnes, who's visiting from the United States, here to talk to a number of students and a few other groups um, throughout this week about his experience um, as an addict who is in recovery, 18 years sober. And his story is, he, he's telling the why, you know, he's yeah. telling them to say no, because that, take it from me, this is this was my life story, this is my experience. And I think it's an incredible opportunity for these young people to be hearing um, from somebody who isn't afraid to explain to them what he's been through, um, the choices that he made when he was their age and how it affected his his future, how it affected his life. Um, and having that story, is, is it's, it, it certainly resonated with me today, and I'm sure it will to a number of those students. And we're going to have a couple opportunities for the community to hear that this week, both in Cayman Brack and um, Grand Cayman locally. Well, we have the platform if we can be of any value. And before I ask Mr. Simon for closing mm-hmm. thoughts, to other guests, Sometimes things transpire and we don't know about it or we find out late and long after the fact. Uh, for um, organizations like AA or other support groups, you have to be in the know, you have to be sort of, is there anything you can tell us, you know, you referenced the sort of, um, you know, alcoholics, beginners alcoholics program that is somewhat, are there ways that we either as a family member want to say to or, or you know, a loved one, hey, there's this thing available, there's a meeting, or even to that person that's listening now and questioning whether he or she uh, maybe is, could benefit from it. Is there something public that we can find out where, where the meetings are or mm-hmm. anything at all? I mean, I'm mm-hmm. not even sure how the public to ask. So oh, guide us. Yeah. There is There are websites. Okay. Uh, there is a the AA Beginners Group mm-hmm. came out website. Mm-hmm. Um, there is the uh, AA Cayman Islands website where all the meetings are listed. Mm. Um, tonight at 7 p.m., this Monday and every Monday at 7 p.m. at the NDC offices, there is a beginners group meeting where we warmly welcome uh, any and all. It is an open meeting, so everybody is welcome. It makes no difference where you're coming from. Mm. Um, what stage you're at, whether you drink, you don't drink, you can literally come to the meeting drunk if you're interested in finding out mm. about alcoholism. Um, so 
yeah, there is, there's this program, and then there's the Al-Anon program for uh, friends and family members of the alcoholic because it's a disease, mm -hmm. and uh, family members and friends' thinking can become distorted without them even realizing it yeah. in dealing with an alcoholic. Yeah. So, you know, it, the alcoholic treat, it, it has a, a, a program mm -hmm. in AA, and the family members have a program in Al-Anon, there's an in-person meeting for family members and friends in West Bay at Double O Deck, uh, Double O nice. Drive, um, at four o'clock on Saturday. Uh -huh. So, and again, there's an Al-Anon website as well. Okay, well, this is where I, I thank you and recognize now maybe in Alexis Alan the closing for that meeting say tonight because may he where the sun shines they say, mm -hmm. you know tonight. Is it as our guest shared just for that person who may be uh, drinking, or is it like she also said, the person who has a family member who would normally go to the Al Anon? Would that person, would both of those people benefit from attending tonight? I was, you know, I want to, I want to thank um, our good friend for sharing that mm -hmm. information because I think that's key, mm -hmm. and I just want to elaborate on something here. You know, those meetings are not like a doctor's office where you got to call and make an appointment. Mm -hmm. You don't have to call the National Drug Council mm -hmm. or call our friend. Just show up. The door yeah. is going to be open, and they're going to welcome you. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, they're yeah. going to welcome you. So, wow. and yeah. it's anonymous. And it's anonymous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally exactly. anonymous. Yeah. But said in the rooms, stays yeah. in the rooms. Absolutely. That, that is a key principle, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, yeah. to this yeah. whole program. I, I would, perhaps, as I listen to you, extend the invitation again on behalf and uh, to everybody else. You know, if you if you're not sure whether you would call yourself alcoholic, whether you yeah, when you drink now and again and you know, go and take that first step. And it may be, you know, one of many that you may have to go. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a challenge, right, Ms. Erin? That's right, yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. These um, people are doing incredible work to support the community. And I I'm, um, know that many of us do it and we make jokes and we listen to songs and some people say, no, I don't have a problem drinking, you just got a problem with me drinking. You know? mm -hmm. um, it, it's not that. Is that we want you to be safe, sensible, and, and healthy. And unlike the years of decades past, when you end up in jail or some asylum, mm -hmm. there's other help that, you know, a lobotomy isn't necessary yes, anymore. Yes, sir. Yep. Mr. Miller? Yes, sir. You will coordinate uh, with your counterparts across the table and have more discussions? Absolutely. I mean, you know, we always uh, um, welcome whenever you give us opportunities to come and share. So thank you so much for giving us this oh. opportunity, Mr. Well, Banks. And well, you're most welcome, sir. I really are. As a community, grateful to what the NDC has done, and as Miss Erin referenced, your studies. I think uh, the great work of the Alex Panton Foundation in still formative years mm -hmm. has affected our young people in a very mm -hmm. positive way. And Absolutely. We, we thank Miss Jean for, you know, for for, for doing that. We're yeah. prayerful in that, yeah. you know, why she is. But yeah. to you, sure. Miss Erin, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thank no, thank you again for having me and. I'm going to use my two seconds of closing remarks. <laughs> um, uh, I think the information that has been shared about the ongoing support locally um, through these various meetings is incredible. Um, but I also want to remind the public about this one-off opportunity that has um, where we are featuring a guest speaker and um from the U.S. who he's just a really impactful speaker um, and we are inviting the community in Cayman Brac on Wednesday to come out to the library from 12 to 1 where um, Mr. Richard Barnes will be visiting with um, members from the National Drug Council and sharing his story there if you just you know want to listen and and feel empowered by uh, his ability to overcome some really dark times himself and just kind of be inspired by that story. Um, and then again, we are going to be hosting him at the John A. Cumber um, School Hall on Friday um, at 7 p.m. Right. So two opportunities there for both Kim and Brock and Grand Cayman. Thank you both. And to our other guests, thanks for, for sharing. And I am... I'm grateful to do so. All right. It's a good community. It's just a question of whether we're going to work together to keep it that way. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes, Thank you for having us. All right. Well, I'm late to say something, but sometimes they say silence is golden. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, join us with more talk today right after the midday news. Have a wonderful, blessed, and safe afternoon.
Talk Today is brought to you by Subway. Open 24 hours in Countryside, Anderson Square in Georgetown, and Centennial Towers in West Bay. And by the Ministry of District Administration. Explore your history. Explore your land. Explore your sister islands. And Cayman Airways. Call them on 949-2311 to book your nonstop flights to Los Angeles and Panama. And now, Barbados. And Digicel, Cayman's bigger, better network. And Doctors Hospital. Peace of mind is important when life happens. Doctors Hospital. Always there for you. Call 949 